Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel of Some Random Geek, I'd always known as Leggings Man, I'd always known as Jonathan Scott, I'd always known as the man who quoted who came up with the title of Let Them Have Let Them Eat Cat. I screwed up my own title. Anyway, it's not my title, it's Kevin Logan's title. Uh, anyway, uh, so on the 14th of July, uh, like, not last Saturday, but Saturday before that, I was on the, uh, American Anarchist's channel, and she, she just randomly wanted to have a hangout, and so she just decided to title it as, like, her 850 subscriber, her hangout chat, essentially, a subscriber chat. And, right, but she invited me on, and uh, she also invited on the vegan anarchist. And the reason why I'm making this video and put in front of my mirror of the hangout is because uh, the uh, like the 24 minute mark or something like that, the 37 minute mark, one of those times. I, I, I could I have the thing open, I can't really figure it out. But anyway, twice the vegan anarchist accidentally. Uh, said uh, the real names of like a couple of people that wish to be anonymous and wish not to have their real names out there uh, or said live on air as much as possible. So I went in, I decided to just go in and just like, I can figure out what times the vegan said those they said those names and just bleep it out. And so that's what I did. And also there was another thing that like I did, and the only other thing I did is that the um, one hour and 45 minute mark because Rose decided to just like it's a subscriber chat so she gets to wants to chat with her subscribers I'm one of them and vegan is one of them and so she put the hangout link into the live chat that allowed for dead man animations to come and join the chat and that was really cool because it's the first time I ever talked with dead man animation he seems like a really cool guy he's communist too and so that's cool and awesome and animated too I'm, I'm jealous of people that can have, that build up the talent or have the talent to draw on something like that and and animation is really cool i i'm an anime fan i mean this is pokemon and so yeah, that's really cool um did vinny good to talk to and cool to talk to did vinny survival the fittest was very interesting to talk to as well oh because he just stole on that channel saw him live hang out decided to join and stuff like that anyway but to the point of why i'm making this video and to tell you about it that i also went in at the hour one hour 45 minute mark because the hangout link was in the live chat and anyone can jump in join the hangout someone did join the hangout whose profile picture was literally a dick pic so it was a literally literary picture of a penis and no one needs to see that no one should have to see that unless they want to and I asked for it, and I don't need to see that because I, uh, I see it all the time when I take a shower. It, it's just everywhere. It's just everywhere. Dicks everywhere. That went. In, that went to a really strange moment right then and there. I don't know what happened. I, I have a strange minds sometimes. Um, and so, and so for that time when that person, it, the person got kicked out of the hangout, of course. Uh, but I, I went ahead and actually put in a black box around at where that profile picture would have been so i kind of like censored that yes i'm censoring that person's free speech because that, the dick pic was unnecessary so i went in ahead and place and put a black box where you would have seen um with the picture itself and so that's why i'm uh, I'm making this video just to let you know that's the thing the goal goal could have been done in text but I'm kind of lazy right now. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, then without further ado, here's that hangout. Thank you for watching. We're live. I just got a notification of that. I'm sure that was my phone yep. just now. <laughs> this is the yep. vegan anarchist. No, it's not. I uh, mean, I'm the stream shut up. You don't see me. I'm no longer on camera. <laughs> I am because I I think I have fabulous hair. I've been told I have fabulous hair. Hello, I'm some random geek hair. Well known to the And we're all watching nut jobs talking to a stream with zero viewers. Is hey, all see my dog. Oh, hello there. Hi doggy. My headphones are oh, it, you can't yep. hear me, mm -hmm. He's I like mean, I'm pretty years old. sure I have uh, I have a picture of my cat on my phone that I could put out on Twitter, but I wouldn't be able to show it on this stream. Yeah. 
I, I don't have any pets right now, sadly. And I live in an apartment, so if I do take in that one stray that's just, like, hanging around... Other people are feeding it and petting it, of course. But, like, if I take in that one stray, it'd be like, all right, here you go. $250 for reasons. Honestly, yeah. I have Oh, yeah, don't calls. you live in uh, Seattle? I live in the suburb of Seattle, yes. Oh, so, you know, yeah, living in that area, it's like, that, that's a super gentrified area. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, one surprised me, yeah. Fuck it, I gotta, God damn it, I gotta open this up. Also, Gwen, if you're watching, you need to put me on your next stupid tweets episode. <laughs> Not my tweets, you gotta have me on the <laughs> show. I, I want to be on stupid tweets, or I want to host stupid tweets. Yeah, uh, make me on. But Gwen. you've already been posting it, so I have to hope for the latter. Yeah, Gwen, put me on your tweets. Maybe for Rose, because you know. I, oh my. Because I'm with you. Oh yeah. Hello, Gwen. Well, if you are watching this, <laughs> uh, Gwen is our one viewer. I'm, actually, I'm not even sure. I'm, I think that's me. I just started the. Uh, there were two viewers, and I haven't even found where the. Oh, there's the hangout. Wait, actually, all right. Uh, I'm hearing myself backwards. I'm hearing myself backwards. I'm speaking in tongues. I'm Satan. <laughs> I'll be Satanus. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, something I found out today, thanks to uh, one of the people in the chat is uh so the okay so the link to it is in here i'm trying to remember the site it's like freedom something uh <laughs> see professional am i right peak professionalism yep oh, i've got a guy trying to interview me who i fucking have left like hanging for months just because like he's trying to do like this it, he lives in the UK. He's been trying to do like this uh, text interview, and fucking really bad at keeping up with text. Mm. You know, someone I'm much better with like voice or video chats or things like that. Me too. But yeah, so what? Freedomnews.org.uk, adding to the anarchist media list. The Anarchist Federation in London launched a new podcast yesterday, adding welcome new voice to what is they currently... They include me, it. though. I'm mad at them. <laughs> well, it, it, it wasn't a comprehensive list. They did say that there were a whole bunch of people, like, that they basically had to, like, boil down the list. And they didn't I mean, include me, they even though I have a thousand plus subscribers? I mean, they were trying to go for... Or from what I'm assuming is it looks like they were trying to go for like people who do different things and they kind of left out the more vloggy type channels from what it seems like. So uh, they purposely discriminated against me? Uh, probably not. It was probably more that it's uh, – there's so many – like vlog channels are like the most uh, – common style like in my experience it seems like that's the most common style for an anarchist channel is like a more vlog heavy channel where someone like talks into a camera and you know mm -hmm. it's kind of hard with you know if that's like the most common one it's hard to pick one you're gonna you know you're gonna hurt somebody's feelings somewhere along the line if, yeah but I'm although that's user, not I was that boy something you do though <laughs> <laughs> It, but look, it's not a dick measuring con contest. I know, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> at least if you have to pick, why, one, why you have to pick me? I didn't even know I made this list until you shared it with me. I didn't, I didn't even know this list was a fucking thing. This but, list uh, wanted me uh, to quit YouTube, okay? Mm. All right, okay. Let me read the article. <laughs> yeah, Maybe feel undervalued, appreciated by the anarchist community. As a matter of fact, I was sad, mm. and I'm not sure to. And I'm just to live my truth because who cares? Well, I mean, just if you look at how few people are in the list, most people in the anarchist community got left off. Mm -hmm. I mean, just so. Okay, let's read the article. Uh, so the Anarchist Federation in London launched a new podcast yesterday, adding. 
adding a welcome new voice to what is currently a very short list of anarchist audio outlets, which we're collating below. The podcast is structured in a topical magazine format with book reviews, comment, and news being covered across fifteen across a 15-minute program. The capital has largely been down to just one regular show since the closure of Circle Day as fuck as fuck the bins joins distant island radio to hopefully offer regular audio take on matters of interest to anarchists the english speaking anarchist movement particularly in britain the us has the excellent channel 0 for daily content has been slow on the uptake for audio visual input over the last few years despite producing copious content individual campaign groups such as reclaim the power and the situation is just as bad for video, with just four groups mostly infrequently running sustained channels alongside the non-anarchist but friendly Real News. London AFED, United Voices of the World, IWGB, Sheffield IWW. More general YouTube fair. That's not to say there is no anarchist video content at all. Freedom has looked into a master list of, lef of leftist channels which has been going round Reddit and whittled, it, and whittled it down to something a bit more manageable. Notable, however, is that below, beyond the excellent stimulator, none are offering regular news takes, and almost none have an entirely regular production schedule. You know, some of us can't. You know, I've yeah. tried to at least do once to, once a month, but, you know, mm -hmm. basically my job is that you are going to up your hours to over 50 hours a week now. You're going to be working overtime every fucking day. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm depressed. Oh, you're gonna work Saturdays too. You know, today I, I said, uh, "Fuck you, I'm not coming in. You can't afford to fire me, so I feel safe in doing whatever the fuck I want." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm depressed half the time, and I live with other people, so it's not like I can whenever I want. Yeah, and I work yeah. for time because I have to. So it's like it, for any video for I make, where it's just like simple. I just saw this movie last night or some time ago. Oh, yeah. It's, I, it's, I like definitely don't think that they're trying to like shame people for not having regular schedules either. From the sound right. of it, I think they're just kind of saying, "Oh yeah, by the way, these channels do not have a regular schedule, so like, you know, yeah. don't fret if you don't see from them for a while." Yeah, exactly. And uh, also, I'm kind of curious, like, wait a minute, how did how does one get on the master list of leftist YouTube and stuff like that? I, I think it might just be a like. I think there might have actually been a thing called a master list of YouTubers going around on Reddit or something. I don't know. And I don't they did have me. But from the set, I, I don't know. Well, if it's um, Reddit, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. I I don't go on Reddit. <laughs> fuck you, Reddit. <laughs> Fuck you, Reddit. You can suck except, my dick. Except you can't get me Reddit. You're just God. You all my homies. Except for our slash vegan anarchists, because you're all my homies. Okay, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, that's my... I, I, know, I haven't been on Reddit at all. I know of it, and so I know how it works. I just know I've, of, like... There's some... I've been on Reddit exactly twice in my life. <laughs> I think that's the same number I've been on Reddit and stuff, but I have seen some cool things. But yeah, I just, no wait, I've been on Reddit because I've heard of the uh, Overwatch porn uh, subreddits. Yeah, I mean, I even basically shut down my Discord just because my Discord. Honestly, there weren't a lot of people joining my Discord. The people that were supposed to be like helping me manage my Discord didn't have enough of a schedule, and I didn't want to be sitting there constantly managing everything, making sure something was going on. So it was just kind of like. You know, there's not enough people for it to be active, so people started dropping out, and I'm just kind of like, you know, with the chat, you know, I've already got enough social media, and I'm focused on everything else, you know, maybe I should, like, call things that I'm doing, you know, yeah, that's kind I of what's going on with YouTube, is that it's like, you know, I don't have time for myself anymore, so, you know, mm -hmm. I had to cut back on my YouTube time, because, you know. I'm not going to, yeah. you know, I, I love YouTube. I love the people on YouTube. I love doing these hangouts. Mm-hmm. And, Thank you know, if I had the time, I would put a lot more time into it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I do want to have some semblance of a personal life. And, I mean, that's really yeah, a thing yeah. when you're a leftist is that it's not really an option. If you're a leftist, chances are you don't have the money for it to be an option to, yeah. just, to have, like, a regular YouTube channel schedule and, you know, to have it be, like, a job, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. You know, a lot of people who do make it work, you know, they had to start out as uh, 
irregular channels mainly just because they couldn't get funding for their channels. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my Patreon, I think, makes like 20 something dollars. Not, I, I don't make a lot of month off of Patreon. WTF? I only made eight bucks and eight cents. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's not a lot, you know, it's not like I make enough money on Patreon for this to just be a job. Mm hmm. You know, you, you know, I live in a gentrified city where rent is easily like <laughs> is easily more than uh, thirty times. No, easily more than uh, but more than seventy five times what I make on Patreon. And that would be just <laughs> for rent. That would be if I was paying rent and not eating. Yeah, exactly. You're just like slowly that's not starving a to death. I do I it because question. I love you, YouTube. How did Counterpoints manage to do that, though? I th yeah, I don't know how she did it. I think she worked a lot of odd jobs before, like, her channel just suddenly took off. And, like, so she was an Uber driver for a while. She hated so why that. why did her channel take off? That's a good question. I mean, she always had, like, good production values, as it was one thing, or just, like, a decent ending, decent content. I th I just honestly think that, like, it, I don't know. It, it's really, I really don't know why, like, it, her channel got picked up. I mean, she always had, like, some big YouTubers that retweeted her channel, and she's been on extreme for other big YouTubers. Oh, yeah, I was uh, around, like, the I was on the ContraPoints train before it was, like, a train. Yeah, exactly. I was on the contract train when it was uh, like a small car with a few people in it because mm -hmm. I had been around in like YouTube progressive circles with, you know, the likes of Christy Winters and, uh, you, know, you know, when there was kind of like a far left and, uh, you know, social justice kind of alliance, which, you know, that alliance mm -hmm. isn't completely severed, but, you know, there's yeah. definitely been some, like schisms there, which, you yeah. know. Yeah, it's I've more with a few know, schisms. You know, there's some tis tisking going at the uh, radical leftists of, don't do that. It's bad. <laughs> oh yeah, it, like it, when it, I... it, it's bad to punch Nazis. Stop it. No, stop like stop not... punching Richard Spencer in his stupid fucking face. Or when I advocate that marginalized people ar arm themselves with weapons. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, got me a lot of shit you from know, liberals. Don't... Yeah. yeah. Don't go against gun control. Fuck yeah, gun yeah. Control. Don't, don't have a nuanced opinion on guns. <laughs> yeah. Conservatives have a similar opinion that it's like, if you don't think guns are the biggest godsend ever, you're going to... Uh, you know what's funny is I think the radical left are kind of the true centrists on gun rights. <laughs> <laughs> we can, I, you recognize, I mean, on the left, we kind of recognize, like the necessity for some people just to have firearms, but we're not like, yeah. we, we don't think that firearms are some kind of permanent solution. Yeah, we just exactly. think that, are like, you know, I think that if you believe in revolutionary politics, you have to believe that firearms are at least somewhat a means to that end. Like firearms need to be like something talked about, not just something banned. Yeah, exactly. And revolutionary politics, anyway, is just like it's, it's inherently violent as well because those who uh, so make are reactionary re politics and even <laughs> liberal politics, all politics are violent. Yes, exactly. You're you're, you're correct. Um, but like those who make reform impossible, make revolution inevitable, or if, if something like that. I'm paraphrasing the quote and stuff like that. So yeah, I think yeah. that was a JFK quote. Actually, I don't know. I mm. might it. I, I don't know. I remember seeing it in a Rise Against video. I think oh, okay. gun control laws are too able. To oh, I'm like against gun. I, I'm against gun control legislation because you know those people can't be trusted. It really that's what it is. Is politicians can't be trusted to do it or exactly. to do any kind of gun control. It, but uh, I mean, that, the, thing yeah. to it, uh, the way I see it as as an anarchist. You know, no matter what, like if no matter whether you have liberal democracy or you have fascism or you have uh, anarchism, uh, you know, you no matter what, there's going to be some form of violence. Really, the difference yes. between these politics is how the uh, is who monopolizes that violence. If you're an yes. anarchist, 
you don't believe in monopolizing violence anywhere. Exactly. And that basically everybody has to have, uh, you, you need to collectively distribute the violence. <laughs> basically <laughs> but, you know instead of having a police force that uh you know can be corrupted and just go on and just kill unarmed black people or you know decide you know and basically be judge jury and executioner you know having yeah, and get people... away with it. yeah and get away and get away with it without uh repercussions yeah. whatsoever yeah exactly yeah. it's similar to like how the black panthers viewed things which mm-hmm. is that it's not that we're big fans of these guns. It's that we're being attacked by police and we're being attacked by a uh, fascist and white nationalist. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is, you know, guns are kind of just a means of defense. Wait, isn't today non-binary day? Just, just questioning. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Today is International Non-Binary Day. Oh, Welcome, God, MBs. Hello, MBs. You oh, are yeah. all valid and you are all beautiful. The beautiful oh, day. Speaking of that, I think Tell I went to, to my first Pride last month. Oh, how uh, was it? Uh, it was fun. We were part of the Fuck Cops contingent. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a whole contingent that uh, basically there, it was called Get, Get Cops Out of Pride. Mm. And, and I got this uh, sticker here that uh, I'm moving a lot of wires to show you. I was mm-hmm. too uh, broke to go angling. Yeah, yeah my, my fucking desk is a mess. I'm glad that like the people on the internet never fucking see my desk because you know <laughs> I've got a controller, I've got nipple ring, <laughs> my desk cords, is a box, an Xbox 360, a Wii. A Wii that I haven't used in in years, might I add. As, I, that's that's the same thing with like all of my like. Uh, st- that's just it. We got in, in my. I left my with my brothers. My oldest brother, who's kind of cool. My all youngest right. brother, who is a gamer geeter. But oh yeah, okay. and then you know my dead name. Yeah, there's a dead name sticker on there, but mm. um, from Coca Cola. Mm. A guy at work drank a Coke and saw that name and was like, "Oh yeah, by the way, thought you'd like this." Oh damn! Yeah, I well, think... no, I'm not out at work. Oh, oh, okay. Do you see that? It says arm trans women disarm cops. Uh, we kind of saw, yeah, we definitely saw the like a uh, cross of the like rifles and stuff like that. So we saw that uh, sticker. Yeah, that that does look cool. Uh, yeah, an and animal it's... liberation sticker on my on my laptop. Mm-hmm. I have and no... some random radio station. But yeah, I got the sticker at a on June thirtieth mm-hmm. in uh in what was it Salem, New Hampshire? Mm. No, it was uh no, it was in New Hampshire. Uh, mm-hmm. I did have to cross the state border to go there. I I was an illegal immigrant into uh <laughs> into New Hampshire. <laughs> oh wait. That's not how American borders work, apparently. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Yeah. Are we not concerned about the undocumented people from coming in from Canada? They're coming in here and buying our shoes. So are Mexicans, actually. And I think we should be fine if we if they're paying money for them. They're they're exchanging in, in value and in trade. That's trade. We want that, don't we? Aren't in there most Americans? <laughs> aren't aren't you a communist? Don't you want trade? Don't you describe <laughs> capitalism as the existence of free trade? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> no. Oh wait, it's only certain free trade. Just like it's only certain. It's only free. Under- yeah, well, only white people are allowed to uh, participate in capitalism, except, or no, only white people are allowed to participate in trade in capitalism. Everybody, uh, everybody else, uh, you know, they're forced to participate in slave labor, essentially. Yeah, and we are, are a commodity capitalist country. You know, the problem with socialist countries, in quote unquote, you know. These quote unquote socialist countries, you know, like the, like oh, as uh, Stefan Molyneux would call it, the Congo is actually a socialist country. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me provide my reaction to oh, that. Not comment. only. Oh. I mean, okay. It, the thing is, is that everybody knows Molyneux is a fucking wingnut. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> Mo- Molyneux is super flippant. Mm-hmm. So is literally, like, at this point, just the whole anti-feminist sphere is just completely flippant. There isn't anything good about them anymore. They're not even, like, new atheists at this point. At this point, they're like, yeah, you know, technically we're atheists, but, uh, you know, we're going to buddy-buddy with uh, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> who we would have been and, railing so hard against six fucking years ago. And Jordan Peterson. The oh, yeah, and Jordan Peterson. Marxists. Oh, by the way, so, since we mentioned G- the Jeeps, I have a t-shirt made by Micaiah B. He is awesome. This t-shirt is awesome. Advocates for the corrupt ideas of the postmodern neo-Marxists. Oh, Micaiah. Oh, Micaiah did that one? Yes, it's on Micaiah's uh, the shop uh, the website, so if you oh, are... I gotta go to Micaiah's shop. I like oh, Micaiah. Yeah. I've actually had Micaiah on this channel before. <laughs> oh, yeah. Micaiah's real cool. He is cool. And also, Micaiah also made this t-shirt. I'm not a nihilist. I'm just a press. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about right. But yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking... There's six viewers now, by the way. Yes, so, and... So, you know, stream is really ramped up. Nice, yes, and a dead man animation in the live chat says, "Congrats on your 850," and gives some hand claps emotions and pause emojis. And uh, yeah. just a guy friend, I certainly trust women, trans women with guns more than cops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna girl. My, with the my experiences with the cops have never been great. You know. Wait, do they trust non-binaries with guns or just trans women? I'm assuming that they trust non-binary people with guns. My channel doesn't really uh, breed shitlords. My channel have only shitlords. Only come, and if they leave a terrible comment, they'll get like blocked or deleted or something like oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, something that you know, I basically have like a no groipers policy for one. Like, and a- mm-hmm. any Nazi, you're instantly banned. You- yes. You're not going to. You're not going to say shit on my fucking profile. Mm-hmm. Well, I you know, there do. There is nothing that you do. Also, fucking, I never finished the uh, article now that I think of it. But yeah. Yeah, we got distracted. Well, That's I also... I also... No, that there is no anarchist video content at all. Freedom has looked into a master list of leftist channels, which has been going around Reddit and whittled it down to something a bit more manageable. Notable, however, is that below, beyond the excellent stimulator, none are offering regular news takes, and almost none of them have an entirely regular production schedule. We have divided them into news, hot takes, and comment. Which one do I fall under? Explain it to archive, actually. Uh, and which then one it's, do I fall under? Uh, mm. Vlog, which is... They, left, they, exclus- they intentionally excluded blog channels. Well, fuck you, man. Some of the yeah, archive yeah. channels. Some of the archive channels are essentially inactive at present. I.e., haven't produced anything new for the last three months. Those are listed separately. Please note this is only accurate as of July eleventh, twenty eighteen. And Freedom is not endorsing the contents. The vast majority belong to individual bloggers. Those or individual bloggers, though some have small collectors. So. Of all of the, uh, so they put the schedules and the uh, type of channel that they do. So, for news and comment, it was a narco syndicalist action, weekly ish comment, American Anarchist, which is the channel that everybody's watching right now. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, camera, camera, lights, camera, action. <laughs> y'all better watch my <laughs> channel. I'm no. watching y'all. <laughs> Yeah, yep. Go oh, watch the and, vegan and, uh, and I fucking good news is I found a weed guy at work. Bad news <laughs> is I'm gonna be uh switching jobs soon because I'm putting my two week notice in at Market Basket on Monday. Yeah, I saw that on your social media. Yeah, I'm like, no, fuck this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. So okay, American anarchist. Uh, the best part, in my opinion, is how they described it or how they described the schedule. Intermittent. <laughs> and then I was categorized as discussion, which I think is about <laughs> accurate. You know, I used to do yeah. more like uh, more kind of commentary kind of stuff, although mm-hmm. even that 
there was always some amount of discussion on the commentary stuff. Yeah. Uh, I had a discussion with Bronx Blogger. I had mm-hmm. a discussion with Bronx Blogger the other week. What come I wasn't featured? Uh, it looks. Uh, I'm just going to say this is not an exhaustive list of anarchist YouTubers. Like far from it. There are a lot more anarchist YouTubers. Also, I think many uh, next is. is how Next many anarchist is, YouTubers have over a thousand subscribers? Uh, let's see. Uh, the vast majority don't. Yeah, that exactly. Can, it's okay. It's, Let, yeah, I can I? Okay, but can I finish reading the list? Sure. Fuck the list. So. Mm, okay, so an actual joke, monthlyish Ooh. comment. It, an actual joke is good. My I love friend, that Oh yeah. I, I mean, I'm friends with an actual joke on Facebook, and we're mutuals on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, an actual it, joke you know is what's funny too about videos. Bronx bloggers that uh, you know I'm kind of the person. You know, it's kind of funny. I'm I kind of gave him quite a bit of traction, and now he's bigger than me. Which you know, I personally don't mind. I hey, was never Bronx here for makes the, good videos. Yeah, I was never here for the subscribers. I was here just to talk about what I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. The, to me, that like the point of YouTube is to do what you want to do. Broadcast yourself, as YouTube used to say. But then it got bought by Google, Google and so now it's trying to be internet TV. But that's but oh, yeah. they, you, you can still be broadcast yourself. This account, they were trying to go like, do you want to sign up for YouTube TV? No, I do not want to sign up for YouTube TV. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So an actual joke, monthlyish comment. Mm-hmm. Uh, is a channel my friend the anarchist spectacle weekly ish a comment channel okay this one is actually inaccurate as bad mouse is uh is an ml now but yeah, bad right. mouse productions so they mm-hmm. had bad mouse but not me fuck you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. not you but bat- like the, the uh, they, they spelt this one wrong but batco the manarchist Oh, daily yeah. comment and hot takes. Mm-hmm. Although Batco, I will say Batco the Manarchist has been trying to move away from the uh, more kind of shit lordy Manarchist label. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I did not want to watch his like a uh, uh, videos just because he had like a uh, Pepe as his avatar. I was like, I don't know if this guy is a shit lord or not. I am resident of Pepe in the uh, in the avatars, but then I watched one of his videos. Like, yeah. a, and then there's a uh, flea. Then there's flea market socialist. He's really weekly ish awesome. mm. tips, comments, and memes. Hmm. Libertarian socialist rants, monthly ish. Comment and explainers. Socialism or barbarism. Weekly plus. Messing about explainers, responses, and hot takes. Socialist revolution. Weekly ish. Comment and explainers. Stimulator. Several weekly news. And then political explainers and essays are a narco pack. Monthly comment and explainers. Love and rage. Uh, ah. Weekly ish explainers. Er, compete. Yes, we get it. You're you're booing everybody on the list because you're not on the list. No, I'm not booing everybody on the list. I'm just booing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought that's what you were doing. Yeah, I'm not. You, you shouldn't say her name live. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, what's it counting? I'm love and rage. I'm sorry. Mm. Non-compete, weekly plus explainers, comment and comedy. Thought slime, weekly and video essays. Uh, I like Thought Slime, by the way. Uh, his channel is pretty. And I... then for archives, which is basically audiobooks and stuff. Audible mm-hmm. Anarchist, weekly comments and audiobooks. Mm-hmm. Chomsky's philosophy. Mm. Ew, Chomsky, boo! Chomsky's an anarcho-liberal. Yeah, Chomsky barely counts as an anarchist in my book. Mm, he, he's an anarchist until it comes down to like actually supporting anarchist actions. <laughs> mm, yeah, I can see that. Also, yeah. he also and he, he got wrecked by also uh, audiobooks. 
Naomi Chomsky got uh, wrecked in- by Foucault. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Inactive. The comfy is the comfy milk shop. Interviews audio texts. The anarchist collect explainers. The communist dragon comment and shit posting. Left sphere explainers. And what is anarchism? Explainers. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure it's been like six weeks since like I last did anything. Now that I think about it, I actually planned. <laughs> Two weeks ago to have like just a random hangout with, uh, with uh, you know, I got a uh, Troy involved or uh, what's his name, uh, Lonely Wolf. Oh, Isn't yeah. Lonely Wolf a peak centrist? Yes. Oh, well, he not he peak does, centrist. Right. He is a centrist, but Troy is definitely left on like uh, economic issues for sure. On economic oh, and no. social issues. I mean, he's, he he's a, a left, leftist who refuses to go all the way. I, yeah, I, yeah. I like him personally, but so his politics is just who refuses gross. to go all the way. Basically, Troy is kind of the opposite. Troy, it, I have a problem with like uh, some of Troy's friends, but I'm not going to blame Troy for like his friendships with those people. And I have, and definitely Troy would have like similar problems with what some of his friends would say and stuff like that. So I mean, Troy, I like Troy, but his politics <laughs> are mine. Good for me, or not he, my case. Kind of apolitical, but leans left when push comes to shove, is what I've noticed. Yeah, like, I can agree with that. Apolitical in that he doesn't really think about politics, but when pushed on politics, he generally leans left. That's what yeah. I've noticed. How mm-hmm. come No Chomsky is on the list if he got wrecked by Foucault? Well, I mean, it wasn't Noam Chomsky. It was the channel Chomsky's Philosophy, which is a Chomsky-based Chomsky. channel. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. But I why? Books, please don't. By the way, please don't use the word "cuck" on my channel. I didn't use that word. Oh, I thought you said "cucked." No, no I said destroyed. See that? I, I guess I am a leftist cuck then. <laughs> don't worry, cuck, I'm a beta. Not cuck even there. Cuck. All right, that was the whole list, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's uh, definitely a mix. Uh, one thing I will say is that, like, Thought Slime, I think Thought Slime is, like, great. I love his, like, a Q&A, like, anarchism, like, videos because it really has helped me. And I, I left the comment on, like, the last one about the state, and I was just like, I can totally see where anarchists are coming from. And I left the comment basically, I think I'm an anarchist now. I think I'm going to go identify as an anarchist now. Anarcho-syndicalism, anarcho-communism, but either one would work. Uh, I'm a little iffy about the Cindy's Bama anarchist without adjectives, anyways, or synthesis rather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm but an anton, this, I'm an anarchist first. Bad. All right. Now I'm actually looking at the uh, thing. All right. Find more mutualists. <laughs> but but mutualists? Don't you mean ANCAPs? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. You aren't. Muchies aren't end caps. Yeah. I had a hangout with an end cap. Rain is not people. American, you're gay. Rain, Rain. I, I know your age. Like I, I know your age. Stop <laughs> acting your age. <laughs> <laughs> I, I acted the same way when I was your age. Stop acting your age. <laughs> Act old. <laughs> I think that's that is fair for anyone. Eric can respond to me. <laughs> All right. This has only been streaming for nine to ten minutes. Yeah, it's, uh, actually now it's like 30 minutes, but, you know, when you mm-hmm. sent this it'll, at 5.11, it's only been streaming for like ten minutes. Yeah. Oh, what uh, do y'all yeah, thank you for joining. Geek what do interacting think about, chat. What do you all think oh. about synthesis anarchism? Mm. I'm not familiar. With, I'm not too familiar, so I wouldn't have a. I don't have an opinion on that. Basically, the idea is to build a loose coalition of anarchists from various different tendencies. I think I kind of agree with that, but I think that there are kind of like, uh, like there's definitely a precedent for that. Like that needs to happen to some extent. If I'm completely honest, is yeah. that you know, libertarian socialists kind of need to get together and work out as many of their issues to get spe- very specific things done. 
I, you know, like, I, I you know, think... there's clearly too, like, it's clearly not completely impossible as, you know, e- e- I mean, you know, anarchists and tankies fucking hate each other. But we've all agreed that we're going to get together, punch Nazis, and have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck the tankies. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe nobody's here. Congrats on your 850. Yeah, I named it 850 mostly just as an excuse to have a hangout out of nowhere. I'm like, uh, <laughs> 850, I guess. I'll, I'll, I'll have an 850 subscriber hangout. Which, by the way, it's an open chat. If anybody would like to join, I can put the link in. I have yeah. a question. Is it possible for a vlogging anarchist channel to explode? Maybe. Yes. As, uh, possible? Yes. How likely? I, I would like to think is more no. likely than it is likely, but as, like how I would want it to be more likely than it isn't. That's the thing. I I, I will say oh. that. I like, I would oh, love yeah. If you said it was just a guy friend, I would have uh, realized that uh, I would have been able to tell you they do trust non-binary people with guns. Yes. I always forget to tell them. I do. We need non-binary letter for the LGBTQ moniker. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, there was already like in Pride Month, uh, from what I've seen on my Twitter feed, is like people have talked about these. Think one contention has always been like Ace Erasure, and I think that is like crap. And by the way, a, f- a close family friend of mine came out as basically asexual, but it, it's not really asexual. He's described if it's kind of a spectrum thing, mostly like hetero, romantic, demisexual, and so like that. So that's cool for him. I love my family member for that, and that's cool. But yeah, I, I agree. I would have no yeah, problem. I imagine that your uh, Trump supporting brother wasn't very happy about it, though. It, well, the thing is, like, uh, my close family member came out on Facebook, and my younger brother, Trump voting Gamer Gator younger brother, is not on Facebook at all. So if you can just. Know. Yeah, it would be interesting if he knows, but the considering the, like that same family member married a uh, LGBT legitimate Trump hater and stuff like that, of course, and offend this, uh, that he wouldn't be surprised. My younger brother probably wouldn't be surprised to be like, oh, okay. And maybe uh, that would be it. I feel like DMAP people have a p- issue being erased too. I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. Designated male at birth. Designated male called- at birth. Oh, okay. Like yeah. me. DMAB, AMAB. It, it's basically, mm-hmm. so if uh, someone uses a D instead of an A for the AMAB or AFAB moniker, it just, or for the, uh, yeah, for that moniker, it, it it's just designated instead of assigned. So it means uh, exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. What? The debate about guns, no guns here. So no reason to have a gun. It's like selling drugs or being a sex worker. You might do it because you like it, but sometimes you just have. Sometimes you just have to just, or sometimes you just have to, just to survive. Maybe without the pressure from success, from society, etc., weapons would be viewed as gross. You know, I, I'm someone who you know, I, I believe that ultimately in like. A self actual in an actualized uh, anarchist like world that uh, mm-hmm. guns would be completely unnecessary. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I, but I, I th- agree. I, or you know, they might be necessary to you know maybe defense from nature, but like, yeah, you like know, even and animals. Humans got by on spears and arrows for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you going to say, Rose, about whether a vlog-style anarchist channel can blow up big like uh, counterpoints can? I highly doubt that it would. In this current environment, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Actually, I think it's really hard just for anybody on the left to blow up. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, you know, the algorithm doesn't make it completely impossible, but it's not like something that like just is gonna happen. It's 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 also highly doubtful on or is it's in it's more difficult to do it on YouTube specifically because how how far right YouTube has been for so long and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. like and, but like uh, some uh, you yep. 
said queer theory is bullshit, they are getting... Uh, Okay, anyone who says queer theory is bullshit should be banned. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, that look, guy. I, yeah. You, you just look at it. Mm. Message deleted by American Anarchist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, it, it, yeah, because I've seen that guy in the uh, chat, and it's just like, yeah. yeah. Did oh. I, didn't I give you a mod power? If I didn't, I'll give it to you right now. Was, so. I am not was, a mod right now, no. But, I gave uh, you mod power, and you didn't do anything with it. Honestly, it's because I haven't really been on YouTube. Oh, what am okay. I to do? Well, I've been having to delete a lot of hateful comments. Mm. That's hey, unfortunate. Honestly, here's here's the trick: just block the people who leave them, and mm. that's oh, one I do less. That often. Yeah, if you just block the person, and it, it's gonna stop. I would block repeat offenders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll see. Uh, in the live chat, Dead Man Animations asks if I can join this chat. Uh, oh, yes, you can. I'll paste the link right here. Oh. That would be the link to the YouTube, uh, to the uh, stream. That won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Just circle you right back into where you already are. So let me get the link real quick. What's holding my channel, me and my channel back from blowing up? Uh, YouTube in general. But how can it be YouTube? The okay. algorithm is a lot of reasons. About it is designed to like make it impossible for leftists to flourish. I think the audience or too on YouTube as well. Leftists flourish. Although they've uh there have been minimal uh, efforts that have uh, made it somewhat harder for the right to flourish as well. So, it, well, honestly, uh, also I remember last we peak centrist is really what it is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is the uh, link. So, damn animation, so you can get in now. So if it was a level playing field, how much would I have blown up by mm -hmm. now? I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, there isn't really is such thing as an equal playing field on YouTube no matter what. Like it's what just if YouTube was like the old fashioned. Be, it would straight up be impossible as it's meant to you know it it just kind of like, you know, who's there first is e yeah. like even if there like wasn't any kind of algorithm like even if there wasn't much intervention, you know Who's there first is just going to get more subscribers faster, and you know that's just kind of the way it is. I like I'm saying, wrong. when I say who's there first, I mean like as in like literally the founding of the site. Yeah. Like you know, it's just one of those things. You've been there. Uh, you can get a. Uh, like if you've just been there for long enough, you can just get yourself like. It's just gonna. It seems to like naturally yeah, happen. You not actually time. have a lot of people that watch you anymore, but you'll have a lot of subscribers just because you were there for so long. Yeah, subscriber count seems to be the thing where it just almost tastes like content that very rarely fluctuates as much as like actual like view numbers or actual like a uh, viewerships and stuff like that. Like a channel can have. Oh yeah, I've seen channels with like. 30 Millions or 40 subscribers with videos with uh, thousands of views. Hello. Hello. Oh. Uh, Can you introduce yourself? Um, I'm assuming that this is Dead Man uh, Animation, right? What's up, guys? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. How are, you, how are you doing? I am doing good. Congrats on all the subs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, like I said, the subs are, are using the uh, term 850 subs. It was just kind of an excuse to have a hangout because, you know, I didn't want to leave the channel empty for too long. I've got Patreon subscribers I have to please. Right. <laughs> well, also, don't worry, I, American. I guess you're, go ahead, Vegan. I, I also just passed 1.1 1. 1, thousand subscribers, so I need a thank you, too. I'm a special nice. snowflake. Get it. Like a vegan comment. Get it, get it. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. 
so dead man how do you just discover the american anarchist channel i'm kind of curious about that so i've been on youtube for like ever but i've always lurked and just watched people's stuff but mm -hmm. like just with how like downhill youtube has been going like i was like i should probably just make stuff now because like mm -hmm. i'm like in my own life like i'm an animator so like oh, my, that's I make, cool. like art and propaganda generally for the left and so like this was i just started making stuff now but i knew about his channel because of um her i mean it's her or her i'm it's sorry her. <laughs> my pronouns are already messed up <laughs> It, it, it's okay. Didn't you subscribe I, to my channel a long time ago? Yeah. I also subscribed oh. to your channel too, uh, Vegan. So yeah, I'll I'll watch your stuff later. I I saw that you did that hangout vegan, with. Uh, please fuck off. Mm -hmm. That's uh, I remember that video. Oh yeah, and um, I'm considering unblocking because I do feel like. Why are you saying their names live? Oh, I'm sorry. Shit. I told you not to say their names live. Sorry, forgive well, mainly me. Mainly the second one because you're doxing her. Oh, shit. Well, let's not connect her to any channel, so to minimize it. Okay. Oh, yeah, but that was kind of what I saw years ago was that, uh, you know, YouTube is going downhill. These anti-feminists are kind of just taking over because they were here first but now they're just spreading like hate yeah you know i mean it's not even that it's just that like even trying to like make a channel and put left content on youtube is just drowned out by how much reactionary stuff there is oh yeah mm -hmm. uh, even I mean, posting I got... trans stuff you get demonetized mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah yeah that's terrible i uh when I first, like, got this channel going, like, beyond five subscribers, <laughs> when I got it to, like, 30 subscribers, and I actually went and made a video. I made a video about David Arini, or responding <laughs> to David Arini. And David Arini DMCA'd me. <laughs> what? I won, but still. Like, he tried to say, oh, you know, Featured part of my video. Here's a, you know, here's a, a di digital millennial copyright act. <laughs> like, he's so trashy. I don't understand how like any of his stuff gets taken seriously, which is part of like the big problem, anyways. Like the most reactionary people can just like completely dox like small leftist channels. Mm, yeah, that's terrible. Uh, oh yeah, they've been allowed to run with impunity for a long time. Yeah, that's just, you know, I, I'm personally, I'm proud to have uh, brought to have uplifted a few leftist channels before. Yeah. He's got plenty of them bigger than me now. Uh, yeah, Bronx Bronx Blogger, only subscribers. The first time I ever hosted him on my channel, mm -hmm. just because I saw him in the chat and he's like, oh, you know, I want to join. I had it, I was celebrating 400 subscribers, uh, mm -hmm. uh, committing illegal acts simply by drinking. Because I'm not 21 and the United States has uh, ass backwards drinking laws. Yes, exactly. Does? Uh, America has ass backwards uh, drinking laws because oh, you yeah. have. No, yeah. they have weird laws around like every part of like just being free in the country of freedom. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. drugs carry, like, you know, just, you're, I would think that you'd be free to do drugs that you want to do. Yeah, but no. The, just doing them. Gives you like uh, you, you, even you know, just doing them like carries really heavy, very heavy sentences. Yeah, exactly. You just, know, you know, they talk to black crazy. people more than they do white people. Yeah, I mean, there's even that. that like, I mean, because race is obviously a factor, but even how like classist all of the just general drug laws are. Yes, oh, yeah. we're such a free country that we have internment camps. <laughs> Uh, that's true freedom. Going to camp is freedom. <laughs> it's like a oh shit. Camp. That that's the Soviet Union model. Oh my god, no! Do we outdid the Soviet Union with our prison system. <laughs> oh, we we totally did. We we have more people locked in pr in American prisons today than Stalin had locked in gulags. <sighs> you got you guys know that like gulags existed like. Prior to the rise of the Soviet Union, right? 
Yeah, yes. I can believe that. Yeah. Just because, like, I don't... I mean, just because, like, I'm a communist, so, like, whatever stuff about, like, the Soviet Union or, like... It just, comes up, you know. You want to make sure it's accurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, it's it's a genuine criticism, but it's also one of those things where it's, like, historically, like, they had certain conditions, and it's, like, yeah, it was bad, but it should be also, like, taken into account of who they were at the time versus just yeah. this, like... Well, I'm it should also be taken into account what America was doing and how America wasn't actually that much better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> also, Dead Men? Yes. What do you think about Christian? this book? Have you read this book, Communism in the Bible? I have not. Uh, who's it's the author? It's a really good read. It's by Jose Marianda. Marianda or I can't pronounce it in Spanish, sorry. Mirando. It's Mirando. Yep, they're gonna like add it to my list too. But anyway, it's a really good read. So, what was your opinion on Christian communism? Um, my thing is that historically Christianity has been such a like, it's been such a ally of like class identity and just hierarchy that like it's hard to see Christianity as revolutionary. But again, there's also a history of re like revolutionary movements that do have like very distinct Christian characteristics. So it's it's not illegitimate. It's just Christianity is very much the dominant force in different societies. So it's 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 very like up in the air and kind of oh yeah. Say. I mean literally with uh you know with a, a lot of uh slave activism, the Bible was used as like, you know, a rhetorical tool so uh, it's against slavery, slavery, but it was also used as a rhetorical tool for slavery, which I think that you would have to do a lot more twisting to use the Bible in favor of slavery personally. Thank but, you, Leviticus. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. well, some of the arguments just turned into, what does the Bible say? But this is, the Bible, this is a lot of things. The Bible, it's like, I mean, for people who even care, like, it's been revised so many different times that, like, that. the idea of trying to have this, like, very absolute yeah. This is what the Bible says is not really like even that accurate, to be honest. <laughs> it, it, it's not even possible considering uh, contradictions within like its own texts. Yeah. Well, to oh, be yeah. fair, you, even one book has multiple different authors, and yeah. oh, if you want more, if you want less contradiction, just rip out Paul and and uh, Book of Revelations, and then you have more accurate, less contradiction. Because Paul contradicted Jesus big time. I mean, Book of Revelations is only good for, like, inspiration for black metal bands who, like, play songs and produce... Oh, my God. Speaking of which, there, mm -hmm. there's literally a band... Because I'm a metalhead. Like, mm -hmm. there's an album by Job for a Cowboy called... Um, not Doomed. What album is it? Um, oh, my goodness. I forgot. Genesis. One of the songs literally is just a passage from Genesis. I mean... That's awesome. Revelations. But no. If, if if Christian radio stations in America would play metal, I would actually listen to them. But they don't. <laughs> they, <laughs> I had a coworker that listened to Christian radio stations, like Spirit One Hundred Five Point Three. Oh, just, like, Amy, Amy Lee, who is, or, and Evanescent, who I'm pretty. Sure, I think that they were like a Christian band. Oh, no, okay. That, uh, even they actually, got banned from Christian radio. Mm -hmm. I think no, no, they. I don't think they were a Christian band. What the mistake was is that on their first single, "Bring Me to Life," uh, the books, their first big hit is that they the the, the it was like had the singer from Twelve Stones in it. It Twelve Stones, who is a Christian band, and that singer was in that track. And so the record labels put "Bring Me to Life" and bring it and give it to the Christian radio stations and stuff like that. And then once Evanescence's first interview with like time magazine or rowing stars or whatever they were dropping f-bombs and swearing across the storm as usual and saying things like they hate jesus or something like that and so the record radios written up records was like oh crap and well, just redraw and just like oh my god we made a mistake we didn't like check if these bands were like christian or not so it's just because of the singer from 12 stones was on that uh track uh bring me to life that's what made people think that they were a Christian uh, radio, uh, uh, Christian rock band, and they weren't. So Honestly, that, leftist I mean, Christian not, music is like, way better than right wing Christian music. If, if Christian the, music was actually leftist, I would actually pay attention way more often, and that you would listen to it all the time. What's 
I mean, mm-hmm. something that I find kind of funny about like people flipping out about uh about uh you know Amy Lee, or, like about Evanescence saying stuff like I hate Jesus like if that had actually happened that was literally something that happened to the Beatles you had people <laughs> in America burning records because they said we're more popular than Jesus <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't I don't know what it is because like because this is a this is an American context for stuff like that right yes so like yeah. I, because, like, America is very distinctly, like, as far as Christianity, very Protestant. And, like, yes. Protestants' relationship to, like, just Jesus is so irrational compared to, like, a lot of other people who are, like, of the Abrahamic faiths. It's it's just this ridiculous thing that, like, if you disrespect him, somehow you've done some great offense, even though, like, most people outside of the faiths are like, dude, he's flawed. He's, like, yes. a person. <laughs> he's no, human, just that... like everyone else. But you disrespect Jesus when you listen to Paul over him anyways. Yep. I can say that. Is, I mean, it's like, is, I mean, I grew up Catholic, and so it's just kind of, like, interesting for me. Well, then again, it's like, I just went to church because my parents want me to, and that was about it. But about, about the sixth grade, my parents stopped bringing us to church and i was like okay i get to play video games now and so we just kind of i just me and my brothers just kind of grew out of it well here's how i always say even though my mother wanted us to be raised catholic uh my both my parents instilled with us because they were fans of science as well instilled in us uh the ideas of thinking for ourselves and being open-minded which eventually led all four of us to be a snotsic or some form of atheist that's cool my gra- you know, I used to go to church with my grandmother just because it was something to do. Mm-hmm. I, I volunteered reading the Bible, and then I was kind of like, I don't think I believe in the Bible. I would read it just uh, for like a good fiction. This in, seems in yeah, this seems kind of flippant, <laughs> and it's not even that good. Am I the only <laughs> one here? This who's contradicts still- this. How the fuck does that work? <laughs> Am I the only one here who still goes to church willingly? Probably, because like I definitely stop. But th- I am I am out of my asshole atheist phase. People who believe that that's time to get over though. You have to be like a healthy person to get past that, and a lot of people don't. There's yeah, that too. I used to be that too, actually. Um, Wait, you have to be a heavy person to get out of that? How the fuck did I get out of that then? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, like in that kind of way where you're willing to actually like challenge your belief and not just be like, oh, I'm an atheist. I guess I'm better than everyone now. It's like no. <laughs> You just get out one part of like one particular religion. Yo, yeah. dead man. Can you guess oh, yeah. I mean, yo, dead man. Can you guess yeah. what congregation I go to? Congregation. Yeah, what kind of church? Um, what are pretty they? sure you said it at the beginning of the stream. Yes. Something like a Quaker or something like one of the more left-leaning churches. Unitarian Universalist. Unitarian. Yeah. You you. I'm a proud. I don't forget either. about them. They're they're so cool historically because they're just like you know what? Let's actually do good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're a merger of the Unitarian and the Universalist strain of Christianity, and they kind of grew out of that to embrace other religions as well. Right. Oh, but oh, vegan anarchists, don't worry, you're not alone. Uh, Luna Nex is in the live chat. Uh, they He's said. That they... How do you say it? Mm. Luna Nex, I think. I don't know. Isn't she an atheist? Nice. She, they, they, she just said like you're not alone, so that's all. That's all. Yeah, just wanted to share that. Oh, okay. I think there is value yeah. in religious anarchism, and I think we need to talk about that yeah. more often, especially when oh, most yeah. of the world is religious and still the fastest growing population in the world is religious because the yeah. atheists aren't having their kids. Oh, I, right, right, right. Like, I don't think my, they, my you go ahead. Say, say, you were talking first. <laughs> <laughs> I well, it just like in general, it's just like we. It, I think we. It's just like picking our battles. If we pick our battles on like religion and saying you're stupid for being believing in a deity, that's just like no, just like, you're a stupid uh, poopy head, <laughs> right? Yeah, the, you're a stupid okay. poopy head because you believe in religion. No, yes. I think that people can. I mean, for me, like what brought me to leftism was Christianity. It was uh, the idea of, uh, you know, the poor are going to go to heaven and, uh, you know, the rich are going to inherit the hell that they created. Mm. You know, you know what made me really sympathetic to Christianity when I was anti-Christianity for a long time? 
left. Oh, yeah, I remember mm, when you were yeah. in your kind of annoying anti-theist stage. I regret that stage, but I learned a lot from it. I regret I, my, I to, my... To be anti- fair, like, even before I, like, reached, like, the political values I have now, dude, I was raised, like, Christian conservative, so I had, like, a mix of beliefs where it's, like, on race stuff, like, yeah, clearly, like, like, Martin Luther... Yeah. Like really basic liberal stuff, but when it came to like really simple practice, like nah, I was conservative as fuck. Like, What's funny about Martin Luther King is that he's actually been whitewashed and that he was a lot more radical than conservatives yeah. like to make him out to be. No, and it's like, so it's like last year's he was like devoutly socialist and was like, oh yeah, he was he was killed doing labor activism. Yeah. Because in America, we kill labor activists in our history. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of dead labor activists. Actually, you know, America just kills activists in general. And I'm talking about activists, not these uh, right-wing motherfuckers who want to go back in time and pretend they're activists. Mm-hmm. Like, like, what kind of movements are you talking about specifically? You're like, basically, you know, you've either got, like, the fashy kind of, like, get the... Uh, it, get the N words and S words out, you know, <laughs> or you've got the, uh, or, or you've just got the people who are like, you know, it, sure, basically just the people who have very like reactionary kind of politics who pretend to be like, when I say that they want to go back in time, I just mean that they have like reactionary politics that are oh. like very against like a group. Yeah. Well, the old one wants to go back to the like a Tommy Robinson, for example. He's just an—I mean, that wouldn't really be going back in time, but he calls himself an activist, even though all he's defending is the status quo. I mean, so yeah. I'm defending the status quo of uh, racial profiling of Muslims. <laughs> God. Call me an activist. I'm an activist because I'm speaking up against Islam, against That's creeping so- Sharia. Do you guys know about uh, Kevin Logan? Oh, yes. Kevin Hell Logan yeah. is awesome. Kevin yeah. Logan basically was the person who bumped my channel. Mm-hmm. He was doing a whole thing about Tommy Robinson because they were doing all those right wing rallies around him being like pretty much in trouble for not following the rules. Just just do a basic thing. Hey, stop harassing these people during mm-hmm. their trials because like this is in America. You don't have the right to like film these people. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I actually think that's a good thing, or I think that's a good thing that, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, fil- to me, I feel like, you know, people in power, you should be free to film them. People mm-hmm. who are in power, don't fucking film them. Yeah, people, people who are in power, power, yeah, don't film them. Prosecuted by people in power. Yes. I mean, the other thing is, like, I mean, because it feels like cops. But even like the manufacture of how we think of the courts has been gone, like went all the way back into like the really early days of film and television, just mm-hmm. like oh, yeah. people, like filming court cases and like telling court stories. So there's like a yeah. mythology around the courts themselves. Yeah, also- exactly. oh, yeah, you know, it, you know, and Kevin Logan was talking about how you know basically it was like a big culture shock to Britain when they like when they had the O.J. Simpson trial, and it was all completely recorded. Yeah, no, all, all filmed and, like, just, like, this big news event that people were just clamoring around. And seeing how, the like... love don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> the Americans can see what's happening in the court case? What? Yeah, exactly. I think yeah, that's... like, they can, they can just record people who are being accused of crimes, you know? <laughs> Even if people, like, legitimately committed, like, really heinous offenses, you shouldn't be, like, you, you shouldn't be recording them. Like, if you want to get information on the court case, on the court cases, talk Where's to, the- you know, the juror, you know, don't record the guy. Like, don't put his identity out there because you're going to get some crazy fuckers who, you know, if the guy didn't do it, they're going to be convinced that the guy did it and they're going to fucking murder him or they're going to do something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in America, we had the unfortunate thing where it's just like we had to create the term of person of interest because for the longest time in American media and news media, we were saying suspect. And so there was a guy in the 1996 uh, Atlanta bombing at the uh, Summer World Olympics. Uh, that like some the, the police officers mistakenly. Uh, 
the guy into questioning and the news reported him as a suspect. It turns out he wasn't the guy that did it. But but because of the news coverage of this one guy being the suspect, uh, yeah, his life went to shit because of the news coverage and stuff like that. And so yeah. I, I do. Yeah, I think that we should take it like they're part of the like judicial process, even though like, no, you're not. You're just yeah, exactly. Like, Malfoy judicial process in and of itself. I also I think that it's also possible that the media is also partially responsible for the mass shooting epidemic. Oh, yeah, in agree. other countries, they don't report the identity of the shooter. In America, it's all over the news. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if it's the white guy, he was a lone wolf. But if it was uh, some kind of brown guy, he's a terrorist. Exactly. Well, not only that, it's like but... The old, but it's like the old when, George Carlin skit where... Or the old George Carlin skit about political correctness, where he said, "You know, they call uh, Israeli they call Israeli terrorists commandos. They call Arab commandos terrorists." Yeah, I mean, and again, in, especially like in America, that context has a lot to do with just settler identity. I don't know if either oh, yeah. or any of you have read settlers before, just know about that kind of context of looking. I've at read a bit of settlers before. Uh, mm -hmm. I might actually pick it up because you know. I heard that I basically read it like with the wrong like thing in the back of my mind the first time. Mm. Well, I, I was going to make the point that a lot of people who do mass shooting do it for fame reason. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And yeah, I can see that. Reporting names, but doing it they want fame. Yeah, that's the problem. The the attention and the marketplace of ideas of the social media clicks and all this stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, people I, treat I it like – I mean, people talk about suicide like somehow that's what people do for fame. But I think that mass shootings are much more likely because when you think of it this way, it's like, hmm, I can kill a bunch of other people white man. or I can kill myself and not experience my fame. So it's, a, it's like – I feel like that's a part of it, but I feel like there's a lot more nuance to every case. Too. Oh, there obviously is. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm just saying I think that the second one is more likely to be something that would happen than, you know, people committing suicide for fame. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I'm not even saying that the second one doesn't necessarily happen, but I think that, too, when we report uh, suicides that way, like, when we talk about suicides in that kind of way, it very much stigmatizes depression and mental illness. It, yeah. Mental illness leads someone to kill themselves. So I have been in a place where I wanted to do that illness. myself. Oh, yeah. But yeah, even even to just like view it as simply an issue of mental illness versus the social structures in place that just antagonize individuals. Oh, yeah. yeah. And alienation. And, you know, it kind of... But yeah, I think you know, it's a patriarchal issue in general. Oh, yeah, no, patriarchy plays a very big part in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, toxic masculinity. Of the people who attempt suicide, not the rates of people who successfully do it, but the rates of people who attempt it, the Ooh, rates of people yeah. who go to the hospital for botched suicides. Mm. And those are more likely to be women. Yeah. It's women. Yeah. And I mean, you literally get statistics of people who attempt suicide with the people who are successful at that because, you know, all of this involved the hospital. So mm. you basically find those numbers and you would include the ones who came in alive and the ones who came in dead in the attempted numbers. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, attempted, you can successfully attempt suicide and be dead. Yeah. Right. But if you look at the rates of people who attempt suicide, women have a much higher, yeah, much higher rate, att yeah. attempt rate, while men have a lower attempt rate but a much higher success rate. Because of the methods used, obviously. Yes. The methods are very I mean, different. I can, say as, I can say as someone who's attempted suicide, the mm -hmm. methods that I've used that have been attempted were stuff that could – that, you know – that I could go to a hospital and be treated for and survive. Right. Mainly mm -hmm. that I had to overdose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me of, I just followed a Twitter account uh, that's uh, called uh, at rel regulated uh, militia, rel regularly, something like that, where it's just, it's, it's a Twitter account that's dedicated to just like, 
putting out there all the news stories of all the um, uh, violence caused by um, uh, the guns and stuff like that. And so it's, it's quite interesting how like almost daily there are gun violence in, in America and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know, Which I is wonder, well, why, what is it about women and uh, and non-binary people when they get really depressed or anxious, they don't shoot things up and white men do it? Because it's entitlement. Uh, gun it's culture, too. I mean, that yeah. too, but it's also, it, has, it has a lot to do with entitlement. Yeah, but white women, I mean, black women are, are, are the fastest growing, or was, I don't know about now, a group of gun buyers. And, and gun owners, and yet their mass shootings haven't gone up at all. Yeah, no. That's an interesting point. So, so I don't know the answers, but that is an interesting distinction. Well, I can yeah, understand. when a white person buys a gun, it's usually out of paranoia, you know, out of paranoia that some black dude or black woman's going to come along and take all the things that he didn't earn, mm -hmm. but that he has. Yeah. Yeah. Where when a black person buys it, it's a well-founded well fear yeah. That that white man's gonna come and try and kill her, mm -hmm. or even women, or just women in general. But I mean, even then, you've got racist white women that might uh, be buying it for uh, paranoia of the brown people. Is is being afraid that fascists will kill me a justifiable reason to have a gun? I say so, in yes. my opinion. I, I even would just straight there up. There are few of any fascists in my area. Hmm. I have fascists in my area. I have people, there's literally a bar up from where I live that has like a Blue Lives Matter flag next to like an American flag. Uh, wow. I, uh, 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 there's fascists yeah, in like uh, Seattle uh, area to, too. Uh, I went to a strike rally today for, uh, gas, for the uh, gas workers union in my area because they're being taken over by National Grid. Mm. Uh, in my county, it's maybe, over 70 or 80 percent Hispanic. There, I was mainly there as a spectator because, you know, I'm not part of, like, the bargaining. But, you know, I show as much support for people striking as possible. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to... Show solidarity. I I'm going to show some solidarity. I was there mostly in solidarity as opposed to, like, you know, organizing the strike or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, walking back to the uh, parking garage, uh, I saw a guy who had the Punisher symbol on the back of his shirt, but it was a, uh, you know, there was an American flag shape carved out of the skull a bit, like kind of with um, like blue mark stars kind of carved out that shape. And then a yeah. thin blue line. And it's like, Ugh. really? Have you never read the fucking Punisher? <laughs> the Punisher literally the concept, the concept is so fucking right wing. Yeah, exactly. The right so wing will right -wing. Right -wing. Yeah, they will just reappropriate anyone, and it's just like, do you understand the source material you're reappropriating? Jeez. Yeah, it, I mean, it's just totally think, missing the point. Think of the fact that, uh, you know, you've got people like Phil Anselmo going, it's like, I don't know if he still says this, but he did say it at one point that uh, rap music is shitting all over white culture, and I'm like, <laughs> you play the rash metal. Thrash metal. <laughs> I like the metal. It's just like yeah. reactionary, that's all. <laughs> you, you, know on, you know what shit's on from black art? And you have the fucking nerve to tell black people who perform rap music that they're shitting all over white culture. You're shitting all over black culture by playing fucking metal. And it's not I mean, even not metal. Even, I mean, like, if you really want to do the, like, go all the way back and be like, let's talk about the, like, origin. Hey, who is the new like, person who here? Made, who made fucking rock and Survival roll? Survival of the fittest? Like, like, yeah. Black yes, Black exactly. people made rock and roll. Black people, you know, metal well, is derived from rock. Well, actually, it was a rock. queer black woman who made rock and roll. Oh, yeah. If you want to go all, oh. all the way back. Oh, yeah. All the way back. That's cool. And you have the balls as... Basically, a Nazi who won't admit that he's a Nazi to say, "Oh, there's a lot of black those people performing rap music are shitting all over white culture." Um, there's someone in the chat. Stop white music. culture. You know, I think shitting all over white culture. A lot of lots of country music. 
Um, um, there's someone in the, the conversation named Survival Something. I can't see the last part. Survival of the Fittest has joined the chat. Hey, guys. Uh, sounds, it sounds uh, like a Nazi thing or a social Darwinist thing. Survival of the Fittest. Are you social are you? Darwinist? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Are you a social Darwinist? What's that? Are you a social Darwinist? <laughs> what's a social Darwinist? So basically, okay, so social Darwinism is the concept of uh, basically applying Darwinian evolution across uh, individuals, which, well, you know, basically it's like, you know, people, some people will prosper, but only the fittest will, uh, you know, only the fittest will prosper and, you know, the rest of them, they can all go fuck themselves. It's basically like a very loose look at like Darwin's theory and basically being like, yeah, this is not eugenics, but it's eugenics. Yeah. Actually, yeah. It was, it's not this... even Darwin's theory. It's actually a, a misinterpretation of Darwin's theory. Yeah, no. Yeah. Darwin it, and it's just about your relationship to the environment. It has nothing to do with this like brutal system of social interactions and like hierarchies. <laughs> well, yeah, not to mention that, uh, you know, Darwinian evolution is about the survival of species as opposed to the survival <laughs> of individual people yeah, you know exactly. in a special species such as humans survival is literally a collective effort yeah so therefore survival of the fittest would mean survival of a species that cooperates because you know when's the last time a fucking human went one-on-one -on -one with a mammoth <laughs> The answer it is never. Went out. It didn't went well. It didn't went well. I will tell you. The, I the answer is that there's never been a human that went one on one with a mammoth with nothing but a spear or nothing but a bow and survived. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but they probably have went one on one with an animal with a bow and survived. Yeah, some yeah, animals. Yeah, but usually. Well, not some animals. I mean, if you think of northern Alaska, there's guys up there that go bow hunting. They hunt grizzly bears. They hunt polar bears. So. Yeah, but you can shoot a grizzly bear. But I mean, and a lot of them won't even die. Up, there's, so chasing. there's usually more than one person involved. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Not for bow hunting. There's not. Bow hunting in the in the actual traditional sense is not. Usually, when you get a bunch of men together when they hunt with long rifles, there's usually more than one. But bow hunting is such a such a particular sport that you need to have. It's usually you know, like a one on one scenario. Mm, I don't know. I've never been. Last time I used a bow well, was in like summer Cub Scouts. Yeah. The analogy a little bit further. It's not like you know one as a human gone barehanded up against uh, you know against some animal like a bear and bear you know really <laughs> killed the bear, not survived. But killed the bear. Bear wrestling. Uh, bear. Probably not very often. <laughs> yeah. Bear hand fights a bear. He barely <laughs> survived. <laughs> but as you know, but as you said, you know, I mean, it takes cooperation of a species to survive. So that's yes. unbearable. Oh god! How <laughs> do we started? <laughs> Barely through this. I just hope <laughs> Barry isn't watching this. Yeah. Oh, Barry is. Barry can't say anything because he's yeah, blocked they, from saying anything on this channel. That's, like, that's the ultimate like comeuppance for that person. Just like spending years harassing people and like taking the piss out of people, and then just gets from the apparatus to do that just for being that. You know, yeah, the Barry basically had his channel almost completely striked down again. Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He his channel was gone for like two days. It's like I don't know exactly what did that, but like I think he was advertising cannabis oil on his like a channel. But I think okay, it was because he was it was advertising oh, like no problem. I, I think he was advertising like a site where you can just like go and get your papers. They're like you cheat on college papers with this slide. They will do the papers for you or something like that. It was one of those two essentially that got his channel taken down, suspended for just two yeah. days. Well, yeah, because talking about drugs is illegal on YouTube, so I'm going to roll up a fatty right now and smoke <laughs> it live. I mean, you can talk about drugs on YouTube, but it's just weird about what drugs. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, or advertising. How you talk about it, because it's like, oh, you know, you can talk favorably about marijuana, but, you know, if it's educational, wink, wink, 
you know. But that's the only thing. I remember back when YouTube was literally a channel where you could just look up people being like two foot bong rip, and it's just like those were channels. <laughs> There's a channel called. <laughs> I might have watched those channels a few times in high school. No, that shit was funny. <laughs> There's a channel I, I called Gabbing actually, Granny. The first video I ever made on YouTube was literally me snorting a line of uh, chicken of uh, ramen noodle. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know that? It was a spicy chicken flavored ramen noodle, and I took the flavor packet and snorted it. <laughs> Oh, uh, my if you hear the background noise coming, hanging out of my fuck, there's not like line just hanging out of my nose. I'm like, I gotta get to the window now because I don't want to get this all over your fro, all over your floor. By the way, if you hear background noise coming from my end, it's because I I live I'm with my dad and my dad I live with other people right now for for a month or so more. So, yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. The background noise is just like one of those things. It's fine. Uh, and, and let's see. Where uh, you know, suburban white boys decide that they have to show how they have to show how down they are with black culture by uh, you know obnoxiously by playing obnoxious obnoxiously loud rap music. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I, I, I like I like rap music, but can you please not shake my house with it? <laughs> <laughs> I like I, rock I, I music. I mean, I keep my metal down so that I'm not shaking everybody else's house. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Who are you listening to? Uh, I, recently, I've actually been listening to uh, the so uh, this band Bad Wolves, which did a cover of uh, Zombie. It's excellent cover. Uh, yes. Oh yeah. You know, the uh, the album Disobey, which, you know, has some kind of anarchistic themes. I mean, the uh, first song is an, is a song about ki- shooting police officers. The song is called <laughs> Officer Down. Yeah. Uh, it does start off by using the N-word, but it's not a white guy. It's a – he's a mixed black guy, so. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I wouldn't repeat what's coming out of his I- mouth, but he, mm-hmm. he's basically calling in as a – white guy to the police officer saying pull the trigger on this well yeah i mean i mean no offense by this i just i just think it's funny that like my black presence in this is just making all of you just kind of like i don't i don't want to offend the black person and i'm just like guys you're you're fine we're comrades (laughs) no i'm actually it's not me going i don't want to offend the black person it's just me going you know i want to be very conscientious about what language i use Mm -hmm. i mean i like i like I don't know if you've seen my hair. It's like, my my hair is textured. Like, it, I don't trust white people near my hair. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you know, my hair I've, goes and tangles really. Got, I've also got Casper skin, so you know, I, I'm white. My hair tangles white, really but, easily. Yeah, no, no one's really white, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, my, you know. You know, I'm only in eighth black. You know, I'm not gonna go like I'm not gonna start going around wearing dreadlocks like, like oh, you know, it's my culture, man. I'm not connected to. It. I'm not connected. I have that sombrero just because it's an awesome hat to wear in the summer. That's all. I bought it at Value Village. That's all. <laughs> well, I can wear a sombrero. Next to it. I can wear a sombrero. But yeah, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not like me doing it. It's just me being conscientious of the language I use. And, you know, I think Mm. that it's very much a thing that uh, black people should, uh, you know, or white people should not uh, take mastery over that word just because of the way that word was used centuries ago or actually not even centuries ago, like less, only a little more than half a century ago and is still used today. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, by the way, uh, so what? What's helping me my channel grow? Wait, is what's my strength? YouTube strengths? Mm, I don't know. You should first. First of all, veganism because that's on the rise, anyways. But also, True. I you I don't know how, but I I need you to like be on a stream with Maxi. Yeah, I we bought that being screaming with Maxi and. Uh, Rose and might as well add Marine for. Oh, sorry, I don't want to. Oh yeah, Marine's great. Well, I mean, I'm pretty. 
Yeah. Were we even oh, yeah. uh, vegan? I think so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vegan. How can we choose that lifestyle? What's your? Well, it's the Maori high ground oh, my style. There's one thing. Is that a boba, boba fett um, fez? <laughs> Yes, I'm more. I, I I'm vegan, oh, but I I oh, try oh, to oh, incorporate oh, some of my ethnic Mexican when I can, even with substitutes. Mm-hmm. It's not easy, especially mm-hmm. being broke. But uh, yeah, tofu, I have access tofu. to lots of fruits and vegetables, though, especially from tofu? Mexico. I mean, I mostly uh, started eating like I started eating as little meat as possible, mainly because I did wrestling in high school. Mm. And then after do or you know they basically you know when you do wrestling, they just decide they're like you know you should do like a vegetarian diet or like very minimal on the meat. Uh, you know, make sure that you get whatever you get like, make sure that you're eating enough protein, of course. Yeah. But yeah, you know they're kind of like you know you don't want to eat a lot of meat. I think they literally said like three ounces of meat, like at like at a meal. Yeah, I think or Americans less. eat too much. I think Americans eat too much meat, or like a lot of people just eat too much meat in general. I do agree with that. I'm a guilty meat either. I have like because I, I cook physically felt better when I like. So get rid of that <laughs> but do you think there's certain like like certain levels to it? I mean, like you have vegans that are on one end of the spectrum, and vegans. So, or, or, or if if your idea is just to eat less meat, then is, then does that necessarily is that the definition of veganism or like I mean, veganism well, is the, or I'm sorry, interrupt. The definition will vegans strive to remove all animal products pro- as far as possible and practicable. And when it's not possible, at least you do it as much as you can. That's what it's yeah. basically about. Yeah. Also, and also animal byproducts as well, milk, eggs, and like dairy products as well as like that because of the. I, I'm not as good on the animal uh, on the animal products, which is why I yeah. say that I'm vegetarian. Why I say that I'm vegetarian at the moment. But mm-hmm. come on, do you expect me to not eat ice cream just because there's no vegan ice cream in my area? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. I can, I can just go to H E B and just get one actually. Mm. But I mean, I don't have one. Like, I don't have a place nearby me to go and get one. Mm-hmm. Sure, I mean, I'm not... You can make ice cream, though. You could make one yourself. I mean, so why is it you guys yeah. are against animal products for in the first place? Is there any reason for that? I think it's uh, animals should not be property of humans. Yeah, friends, not I food. Mean, that's it. My thing is that just like a lot of the science around like just like how the human diet works. It's not that like eating meat is inherently bad. It's that the capacity of how much meat we eat is bad. So it's yes. not that, like we shouldn't eat meat, it's that how much meat is just considered normal in our society today. Uh, is just, also, like, meat, kind of meat, just, well, I, a meat diet is also environmentally destructive. Yeah. There's that too. Probably also, you know, like a non-meat diet is also environmentally destructive because when you look at, true, you know, the farming and, you know, these big combines that kill everything in its path, every little ground animal, every little squirrel, I mean, thing, that, that has more. That has more to do with capitalism than just necessarily yes. like. That has. Just, I mean, like that has more of an impact, I would think, on animal products than if you know you have factory farmed beef or whatever it is. But I don't think that necessarily that that our diet reflects the amount of meat we eat. I think our diet reflects the lack of activity. The so impact of the amount of meat we eat is because we're a lot lazier, and we don't. And like while we eat it with, you know, like a processed, uh, you know, trans fats. You know, high sugar content. I don't think the meat's a culprit. I think everything else is a culprit, including but including sugar. The thing is, it's not just meat; it's animal products. So everything that comes out of a cow, everything that comes out of a pig, a chicken, all that, all of it combined, on top of the food industry, an industry that's getting you to consume food because we eat food anyways. But under capitalism, the goal is to make more profit. So yeah, yes. and get you to eat the good. food that they can produce for cheap. Right, yes, and that's the other exactly. thing. So it's, it's, it's not just meat itself. It's no, everything. it's the quality of the meat that you're eating. I'm sorry, what? Or, or sorry, it's the quality of the meat that you're eating. But that's the thing. Even trying to account for that, especially nowadays, is incredibly absurd, especially mm-hmm. considering that like, to get good meat implies that you have access to like a very specific farmer who raises them in the kind of environment that would actually give you good meat. 
and then be able to trade in that very way. And that just doesn't exist for the majority of people. So that even, I don't feel it's, I mean, yeah, I don't feel it's any more then, absurd than being a vegan because you need to find specific vegan places and have vegan food. I mean, so I think if I like where I get my food, I, there's a farmer's market that happens every Saturday where I live that I just walk to. And then right. as far as grocery shopping, like I spend like $30, $20 on just fruits and vegetables. And I have like meals for the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I managed to eat vegan on food stamps. Hmm. Some people, are, yeah, and sometimes it and all I, depends. And, and, and but I, I, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the only vegan, so that includes other non-vegans, but I still managed to do it. Mm -hmm. it's I, I live in a, uh, or I personally, li or I live in a food desert, and yeah, you know, also like if I get my lunch at work, you know. I'm not going to be like, well, you know, all of my options here have meat, so I'm not going to eat anything. No, exactly. I go like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to choose the meediest thing, obviously, but right, you know, to the ability, gonna, it's not. Yeah, but same. unfortunately, pre, you know, uh, prepackaged processed foods, the meat yeah. isn't the issue. You don't right? always have a choice. No, yeah, right. No. So, Obviously, you don't always have a choice. That's capitalism. <laughs> That's capitalism, yes. Capitalism, it gives you a million choices on what you don't need choices for, but gives you no choices <laughs> where you have to be choice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. Okay, so I'm, is the I'm issue capitalism or is the issue animal products? I mean, it's, right now it's capitalism. I think speciesism and capitalism are intertwined. Yeah, Even yeah, species definitely. just predate capital and by thousands of years. It's so never our capitalism relies on exploitation of non human animals and human animals just to survive. Mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, exactly. I'm so great I feel like veganism has to be anti-capitalist. Otherwise, you're not yes. full vegan. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, sorry, uh, you said – Otherwise, you you're veganism just a anti-capitalism. What did you say? Survival of the fittest? Sorry. Or, sorry, I just thought he said that, that uh, veganism is anti-capitalism. Uh, well, no, ve most no, no. vegans are, but they should be to be consistent. Yes, yes exactly. capitalism Better. relies on, on exploitation of humans and non-human animals. Yes, Exactly. So veganism and it needs to be anti-capitalism, and that, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and most veganism agree with that too. Yeah, Mexi and I are radical vegans, not your everyday liberal vegan or anti-capitalist sure. dry vegan. Mm -hmm. To Captain Andy is also a vegan activist as well. Uh, Electric Mayhem eighty seven, uh, Luna oh, Bitch. Oh, I Ashley. love Electric Mayhem. We're two good friends. Oh yeah, yeah see, I'm on the opposite yeah. end of the spectrum. I mean, like I hunt my own food. I like I. You know, I fill my freezer full of meat every year, you know, so I have, you know, free range organic meat. So, you know, that's where I'm coming from, from a perspective that I don't feel that eating meat is bad. I would much rather grow my own vegetables, eat my own meat that I hunt it than to go into like a Smith's snacks and, and eat some mm -hmm. processed sandwich that's in a, some, you know, vegetarian sandwich because I, I don't want to eat meat, but yet that vegetarian sandwich is full of, you know, enriched uh, wheat and, and flour and you know sugar and, and all that processed garbage which is what's causing most of the problems yeah oh, well, and, yeah what do you normally hunt uh Easter. wood bison elk moose woodland caribou barren land caribou um but even oh, oh, uh, even, i was even, just curious like the kind of the kind of diet like you, you had because you said you consume meat it's not because not all meat is the same like there's right I'm, right right but like right. is it um I mean, I don't. I don't want to get too much into your personal life, but uh, what kind of region is it, or what area? Uh, Northwest Canada. Northwest oh, Canada. that's oh, why. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it's that's easy. Not everybody Canada. has that kind of. Well, life. no, 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 no. Don't do not diminish it. It is not easy because the amount well, of training. Right? Yeah. But not everybody lives in that region of the world. So yes. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's. I'm not. I'm not criticizing the lifestyle. I'm just. I'm just fascinated with people who have that kind of lifestyle. Because, like, I'm right. from California. Like, there's literally like millions of people in my state like you can't really just go out and hunt and if you did yeah, you can you, you, you can go but i mean like you can go hunting you can go all hunting you need to go up to okay up to Hunter, Idaho. Get yourself you, banned. Up, you have to go up to you have to go to a place to do that yeah, yeah that's but i mean if you're as committed to a vegan lifestyle then why not be as committed to an organic free range lifestyle if you had to put as much effort into being a vegan you just take well, i'm for, per, I'm for uh, permaculture i'm I, for i'm for a Getting rid of the currencies of agriculture and replacing yes. it with something more ecologically sustainable. Yes. I believe our current agriculture organizing is around farming. Oh. Yeah. Like, I grew up, like, I even helped. Eh. Sorry. 
That's why I'm a green anarchist. So, like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's not like one of those, like, I don't know what I'm doing with, like, my food exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have I mean, for me, I eat not enough to live as off healthy of. as I can and consume. I mean, you know, the meat thing for me is more of an ethical thing as opposed to really a health thing. But I don't understand where the ethical component falls into it because, I mean, we've all evolved from eating meat, and, I mean, animals are there for Not us to eat. No, no, yes. I mean, 100%. I mean, veganism no. is nothing but a first world luxury. And we, and we all know that. People in it's India not. are vegetarians. Yeah, yeah but vegetarian and veganism are two different things here because now we're True. talking about, right? No, but, no. Like, I mean, we're talking about moral and ethical options to say that all animal products you know, goes against the grain, whereas veganism and vegetarianism are two different things. So I don't feel that by uh, harvesting an animal that's, that's, that's put there for consumption. But that's the it's thing. It's not put consumption. there for consumption. It's, that animals it exists for, for their own. Animals should be treated for their own sake and value for their lives. Not okay. For consumption. But not okay. even that. It's, it's the assumption that animals exist for our personal consumption. On yeah, top of they don't. It's, where we yeah, are right, right now in history we live in a society where we overproduce these yeah. goods. Like you go to a McDonald's, you go to a supermarket, you go to any place, they offer meat because it's raised in the multi-millions and slaughtered by the thousands every day. So it's it's not a matter of like our personal relationship to meat. It's about our social context and relationship to meat. Well, okay, okay, okay. So hey, let's look at- It's a systematic thing. It's just like a system of capitalism that like perpetuates these problems as well. So yeah. it's just why capitalism must end as soon as possible. Okay, so well, let's look at remote regions. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, okay. okay, so, you know, so like, let's look at remote regions throughout Northern Canada, um, uh, you know, like Alaska, Yukon, Northwest Territories, um, Inuvik, where, you know, you have, like, like you have cultures of individuals, um, Native Americans, Inuk, I mean, these people were literally raised from the land eating animals. You cannot grow vegetables, you cannot grow fruit up there, right? I mean, like, they literally yeah. eat whale blubber, um, uh, you know, whale meat, seal meat. Um, small game. Um, so how can you not say that the animals are put there for consumption where you would have had... The problem is that you're thinking of this in a purely isolated context. And that, and, and that yeah, the point I'm trying to make is the same. Different. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Um, in that context, like, in order to get what they need to survive, like, yeah, the actual animals of the land is how they survive in these regions. But we now live in an era of time where we overproduce so much food that it would be simple to like not only provide them with better food sources, but just the way we have agriculture now, these regions could easily support communities because of mm-hmm. how we engage in agriculture, how we have farming techniques. And again, the biggest thing is that when we talk about just the loss of entire animal species, because we're living in like, um, I forget the specific term. Um, Mass they- extinction. Yeah, the sixth max extinction. There's so many species that are disappearing. So this this idea of like living off the land, it's not that you can't. It's just that's not the time period we're in right now. Like we live in a time period where like, especially like animals that live off the land in that kind of context, like if hunting doesn't put them towards extinction, just climate change alone will. Oh yeah, that like, right, wait, right. Wait, so I mean, like you're looking at like a very specific thing as well, because like you're imagining your area that we have a McDonald's and a fat burger in every block, but I can imagine, you know, Alaska, Northern British Columbia, Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Ontario, Quebec, all the way across well, Canada, I can where you have also you know, tell you, 20, 30 million also... people that don't have access to that because it's so remote, and because you live on the Canadian Shield or because you live in the tundra where the permafrost is, you know, 15 feet below your feet, you're unable these agriculture uh, and, you know, permaculture techniques you're talking about isn't applicable in places like northern Canada. Well, what you what know? techniques are you thinking about? So there's true. Stacks, there's internal I, would, I mean, true, I do acknowledge Well, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, wait, cost, wait, wait, wait. cost, right? Well, I do acknowledge that. It and is, again, that, that is, if we're is, talking about cost, Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait yeah, let, let vegan anarchists talk. My bad. I would advocate, even though I would be a hypocrite, to leave those people alone because they're already oppressed enough. But I do right. feel like... Right. Our animal consumption is putting tribes all over the world, like in the Amazon, at risk for its extinction. Our animal products have destroyed the Amazon and is kicking natives of, natives out of the land. So mm-hmm. just by, from an indigenous perspective, it makes sense to eat less uh, processed meat or meat. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, like when we talk about costs, 
that goes right back to capitalism. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about the distribution of like resources, like right. food, that goes straight to capitalism. So, if you want to talk about cost, it really has to do with are we making food for profit or are we making food for communities who need food? Yeah, right. so making... these communities, even for the food, I mean, even for the food for these communities, even just if if you're looking at like a zero, like a zero percent profit, even the cost to bring in these, um, you know, like the materials required to uh, even you know, farm or, or sorry to uh, even, you know, grow your own vegetables. I mean, the cost to bring those in outweighs the benefit, right? But that's the thing. If, I mean, like I said, that's a matter of capitalism. A yes. government could easily fund that. That's, that's not even a, a, like a thing to think about. And but see, like the government can't fund it because, because, because the funding comes from tax dollars, right? And then who's being taxed here? We're talking okay. about the middle class that, is being taxed. Yes, but under full communism, cost when it would be a factor. In this relationship. Under full communism, the quote unquote communism. Uh, okay, one, one of you at a time. So you did have your turn. All right. Thank you. All Ooh. right. So, Daniel, you were going to say something? Oh, no, no. Um, Because um, Survival of the Fittest, like, his point, I, I, I totally get what he's saying. But, like, we're, we're literally looking at the whole superstructure of um, – I'm sorry, what – Canada, my bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the whole superstructure of how Canada as a country operates. It, it's a capitalist country. So at the end of the day, when you think about the cost and, and just providing for these communities, we're really talking about a superstructure that's built on profit. So it's, it's in this, like in the way that Canada is structured right now, yeah, it's completely unfeasible because it doesn't make profit. But if it was based on building up a community, yeah, you would easily fund it. You would set up these communities and they would again, be self-sustaining. They have these farms that could grow their food and have access to food. And so it's really just a matter of looking at how everything is structured rather than just like thinking about this through just simply a cost versus um, profit analysis. Yeah, I, 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 I understand what you're saying there, but like when I look at the immediate, like if we're talking about like now, right? I mean, like, like the ideal situation down the road, in the future would be to have sustainable communities that could grow their own, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables and they could supply their community and have a sustainable community, but that's not the reality today. So people need to eat today and people don't have that option. And until the superstructure changes, that's not even a viable option. Right. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah that's, I know that. I interrupted. <laughs> so, uh, oh, sorry, I mean, go ahead again. Daniel. I mean, that's definitely something that I like 100% agree with, which is that uh, in order for veganism to even be possible, you would have to completely eliminate the uh, capitalist superstructure that uh, makes it impossible. And right. So, until, right, right. so until that support system is there, until no, that support that's... system is there, you can't call somebody a meat eater on, uh, on moral or you know unethically because that system the two options aren't there So if you're in a situation that where you have to eat or you have to provide for your family oh, yeah. And the only way to do that is to buy is to go out on the land and hunt when you look at like you can take it from somebody who lives in um, Yeah, you Northern can't Asia. tell somebody we're not oh. I'm not so disagreeing with are, you. Are, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you definitely cannot tell someone who has to hunt to survive that like to, to stop doing that stop hunting yeah, no, that's, that's like if you tell people stop sleeping in the streets yeah well, where the fuck are they gonna sleep are you are you gonna give them a home to sleep in mr officer but no, 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 no. oh yeah i know that that's why i don't shame rose or that's why I not as a mm -hmm. hardcore anti-species, or I am, but I don't judge people like I used to because I know about that. That's why I say we need to destroy the capitalist What's status the... world order and patriarchal because patriarchy feeds in immediately too. What I was going to say. What's, what's this person's name? Bearded penis? Bearded what the hell? Head down slur on dicks. There's dead Viney. Dead Viney no, is cool, yeah. I was I was gonna say about the vegan point. Um, like, oh, it, it's that not that under capitalism dick. can't be vegan. Oh, hold on, hold on. This guy yeah. literally has a dick pic as his pic. You must remove him. Yeah, the, I already removed that user. If you can, he's not there. He's still there, Rose. Yeah, I'm trying to eject him. Anyways, all right. Let's hear from this new dead viney guy. Dead viney is cool. I've seen it around. 
Dead Vidney or Jarek, do you have an opinion on the uh, conversation? He's probably yeah. having audio problems. All right. I was. I just want to finish up this point real quick. Um. So no, about like, like capitalism today, right now, like how the superstructure is right now. It's not to say that we can't move towards veganism because the whole point is to like move away from meat. So it's not to say that like veganism is impossible under capitalism. It's to be fully realized it can't be done under capitalism. So that yeah. means like the communities you were talking about, the ones who live off the land and whatnot. I'm not saying they have to abandon that way of life because one of my biggest things as a vegan is to that like food is culture. It's a big part of humanity and you can't just rip that away. And people who very much view like the consumption of animals as this deeply moral issue, I mean that's a really liberal way of looking at food. Yeah. It's, it, there's a bigger there's a much bigger tie to community. So I, I definitely get what Survival of the Fittest is saying. But in the actual context of where we are right now, to move away from me is just not only going to be like the most sustainable way to get our nutrients to survive and everything that food provides for us, but especially in communities that do exclusively hunt, in order to actually survive as communities, they're going to have to have access to a food resource that they can grow and harvest, which is why my opinion, as far as like how you deal with this issue, actual like activism from people who have not only the resources to help in those circumstances, like, you know, introduce different like modern farming techniques that can be done in difficult areas. Because again, there are plenty of ways to grow food in some of the most harshest environments. So it's, it's just a matter of using like what we have now to actually move towards veganism, which is the goal anyways, to move towards veganism, not to like assert that everyone must be vegan now. Right, again, exactly. They have to move at their own pace. Right. So do you feel that the like like that the actual goal, I mean, like, is this your personal goal or like or objectively, like, do you feel that we're actually moving towards uh, like a no meat veganism society? Or is that something that like, because I, I mean, I'll, I'll, sorry, we're yeah. not we're ahead, not because in many regions across the world, meat eating is actually going up as they try to copy Western style. But th it would be a better world if we didn't consume as much of meat as we do at least. So yeah, it's not that you're opposed to consuming meat. It's just the amount of meat that you're. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm. More yeah, my main like... issue is factory farming. If I'm completely honest. Yeah. Right. The uh, mean... raising of animals simply to slaughter them. Mm -hmm. My thing is, if you have other alternatives besides eating meat, you shouldn't kill them in the first place. And and yeah, those alternatives. Yes. Yeah. But okay, so, so so like, let's so look at the life cycle of an animal are... in the wild. You know, like an animal in the wild, its mm -hmm. ultimate faith is is either he's going to be he or she will either be torn or ripped or apart and eating, you know, eaten by a super predator, or they'll have some infectious disease and die a slow, painful death of infection disease. Like that, like animals, it's not Disneyland. Animals don't live in the in the wild and have these wonderful lives that prance and and run and you know frolic through the woods all day long. They're constantly under stress, they're constantly being hunted, they're constantly on the lookout. So a high precision rifle It's a different kind of stress though, isn't it? Sorry? Oh hey, hey. Dead Vinny, okay, we can hear you, but you're a bit low right now. So oh, okay. Yeah. Um to answer survival of the fittest, um just uh I mean, life is more complicated than that. There's there's a lot of different types of life and lots of of relationships as far as the food chain is concerned. So it's mm -hmm. it's really not that black and white. But more specifically, just I, I don't so? think. Oh, you mean there's mm -hmm. detritus feeders, there's scavengers, there's different kinds of like yeah, like you I say, mean, like it's not there's there's far more herbivores than there are carnivores. I mean, that's I mean there wouldn't be carnivores if it was an equal split. So like the majority of animals that we think of in a mammal sense, as well as like. <laughs> Hello, another person. Uh, American uh, anarchist uh, mug one. For a second. Smoking, being cool. <laughs> Don't worry, it's still, up, we're still. I... I like your channel. <laughs> yeah, Americans monk. Uh, yeah, monk one. I anarchist just watched your you American mug one. Anarchist mug one. Cigarettes, not. <laughs> uh, I, I like your most recent video of Monk One, but anyway, back to that uh, man's animations on point about like. Oh right, that no, um, because like uh, life, life is just more complicated. There's different types of relationships, like right. parasites, 
You have um, hydrogen. Okay. I can never say it. Uh, um, blood suckers, people who just like you know take other people's resources. So there's different relationships that animals have with each other. So it's not yeah. specifically a like I have to kill an animal in order to like survive. And again, right. that doesn't even factor in plants, which are a giant part of this conversation of life, mm -hmm. which again, they don't even eat. Well, not all plants. There are carnivorous plants, but most stop, plants. Stop being fly traps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said there are there are carnivorous plants. But, yeah, um, I know. That's why I was talking. <laughs> He's making a joke. Said that they're He's all making a joke. Definitely. Definitely. But no, just, there, there's, there's many different relationships. So it's, it's not so cut and dry. But the, the big thing is that our relationship in like the here and now in our modern society is one where meat production is done for market-based exchange. It's not done for mm -hmm. consumption. And so that's the biggest yes. like contradiction that has to be dealt with. And it's not to say that like certain lifestyles that have been around for thousands of years, which again, are very important to communities and very culturally significant and should be acknowledged as such. It's to say that they need to move not them specifically, the people move beyond that kind of um uh, oh, Magma, that kind of your, uh, their own pace, basically. Magma. Yourself a little bit. Daniel, mm -hmm. can you expand on 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 that comment you just made that meat consumption is or sorry, a meat production isn't isn't for consumption, it's 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 for what, sorry? It's oh, for market based exchange. It's right. just that's just basic okay. capitalism right there. We are producing meat for we produce more meat than we even actually eat. Right. Yeah. So, well, is the issue about the production, or is or is or is it about waste? Because I mean, we overproduce because we. Percent of our food. Yeah, hundred percent. We're an extremely wasteful society, especially like yeah. Western culture is extremely wasteful. Oh yeah, and see that's that's what I mean. It's like we don't produce for the sole idea of that. Like, oh no, we're we're gonna have like a famine soon because we don't have enough food. No, it's the exact opposite. We have so much food that we waste it, and so that's the whole point. And especially when you talk about all the actual resources that go into making meat a consumable product and how much it's put into just about every kind of food you can think of. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously like, I, like I kind of disagree with that statement because I mean, obviously as, as humans, as a species, we need to eat. So, I mean, the base fundamental right. purpose to, you know, for food obviously is not financial. It's, you know, to sustain, to sustain life. And then once life is sustained, but then we move into the financial, Component. Not really. System. Well, yeah, obviously, I mean, like, we need to eat food to live, right? Yeah. But capitalism doesn't value human life unless there's an exchange for okay. it. But yeah. capitalism yeah. wouldn't be there without human life, and food is is essential in order for human life to to exist and and you know to move forward as a species. So we need to eat first, primarily before we do anything. Like when I wake up in the morning, Tom, I eat food before I go out to make money to support the capital marketers, right? And I'm sure we all do. So no, I mean, no, no. food first. Continue. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, you know, sorry. So like, you know, like uh, food is there first to be eaten, but I think the issue is 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 how wasteful we are, and the reason why we're producing so much food is more of a societal issue versus a capitalist issue. That what is our society though? Because I agree with that statement, but what is our society? Ah, ah I saw that conquest by bread. I saw that. That's what that's about. It's about like making sustainable. Society and like having food that's sustainable first is the primary product of revolution. Yeah, capitalism, mm -hmm. it, capitalism left on its own devices is not sustainable in of itself. It requires the state in order to be sustained. Right. I mean, it, its entire mm -hmm. basis is to support an, in, like, what is it? An, an infinite market and an finite universe. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fundamentally, like, doesn't work like that. <laughs> And it, it requires the the like ever uh, like exponential expansion of capital, which yeah, that's in, that's not really feasibly possible in, in a lot of ways. I think humans, you know, as a species, are just transitioning through a very weird time where you know we don't have that threat of of famine. We you know we forget about the Great Depression of 1930. That was so We're far ago. I mean, capitalism. But, you know, but, I mean, I, I don't, I don't there deny it. I mean, still you know, people starving, and there are still Americans earning less than three dollars a day. A hundred percent. I completely, I completely agree with you there. But I think, you know, collectively, as like I'm just talking about, you know, like Western culture right now. That I mean, we live in an area that where, you know, we're not threatened. We don't, you know, like my grandparents, for an example, you know. Like I grew up going down into my grandparents' pantry where they had food bottling can because when times were times were good, 
they anticipated the times would be bad. So they would prepare, they would store food because that was a reality. In today's world, we're three meals or sorry, nine meals from anarchy. If the if the if the stores closed tomorrow, we had a big global economic collapse. Most people only have enough food in their fridge to you know to sustain themselves for nine you know for like three days, about nine meals, you know, and um. But that so, has everything to do with capital capitalist alienation because we mm -hmm. as individuals don't really own the means of production. They're yes. held by a very specific group of people. So that's right. that's why it's like that. It's well, not that we don't have the ability to like ourselves it's that the people who control the food supply is a very small group of people and like i said it's based on market exchange not about consumption of like resources but the reason why you're in that situation is or not you sorry but the reason why we're in that situation as a society is because we allowed ourselves to be in that situation to depend upon this very capital system to support you know our you know our our idea to be even you know veganism like i say is a first world luxury the only reason why we're talking about this now is because we it's don't not, have no. to go out as a you know society to hunt our food anymore food is overly mass it isn't a first world thing there are many cultures that have like traditions of veganism and generally there are a lot of places in the world that like practice veganism could you just give me a specific example because i actually don't know any thailand and I, does, india does um story where like, thailand does india does um I'm but I think that. that's more uh, vegetarian that versus vegan. There, there, there are all cultures that eat over ninety percent of their calories from from plants, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, it's a movement away from meat. It's not to say that like you have to be completely non-meat because again, that's not the case in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. There is that nuance there. Again, if you yeah. could, I, I, I'm not against like in, in like lab-grown meats if done right. right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Cultural meats. Yeah. Yeah, culture means. What do you What do you think about um, insect products? Like, I've, I've read articles that said like. I think it's much more sustainable. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I just, I mean, I support insect as well. I mean, like, I know that there's actually insect protein you can buy that that is, oh, yeah. uh, you know, very bioavailable. So it's actually more bioavailable than them, than what most meat products are. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, also, if you think of it, uh, generally, when it comes to insects versus. Uh, yeah, or when it comes to insects versus, uh, you know, animals like cows, for example, over 80% of the world, they eat insects. Right. Only about 20% of the world eats stuff like beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like stuff. Uh, just from my perspective, it's like, I, I'm pretty sure there's a vegan who knows about this issue than me, but from, a, like, from what I know, it's just, um, cause we like in the West, like, we don't really consume insects like that, but from the ones we do, a lot of them are from very diminished communities. So like bees, for example, like mm. a lot of honey, like it's, I, again, I'm not an expert on this, but like our relationship to bees generally isn't exactly the most uh, healthy for them. No, yeah. it's not healthy for them or even for the rest of the environment, in fact, because uh, Honeybees actually, what they do is they outcompete like other pollinators. Yeah, is simply right. because they have human assistance. Yes, exactly. They so have just... human assistance to basically outcompete um, bum to outcompete bumblebees and outcompete other animals that and don't produce honey. Just and the way we see it is, oh well, they don't produce stuff. honey, so fuck them. Yeah, bumblebees just got added to the endangered species list. That is very interesting, actually. Which I is another that. case of capitalism or humans value nature for what he gave us rather than for its own intrinsic sake. Yeah, right. exactly. So, yeah, the problem, again, is stems back to capitalism and the exploitative nature the of... The modification of it is really yes. the big issue. Mm -hmm. Yes. When people were doing it just to survive, it was completely fine. But when people started commodifying it, that was when it really became an issue. Yes, the commod the commodification of nature as well as just like bare necessities of food and shelter and all this stuff. Yes, that's the problem. Right, but it's a double edged sword because it's that action that actually gives us the option to talk about what we're talking about here today. What do you mean? What I mean is, like you said, that you know, as long as people were you know um, utilizing animals. As a primary food source for survival, it was fine. No, no, no. And now you say, and then that you said that fine. you know, like once it became a commodity, then that's when the problem is because now there's overconsumption of it, and now it's it it doesn't have the same moral or ethical uh, base to it. 
because we live in a different society. And again, those well, we don't all live in a different society. Stuff, they had a different context for their society, so they weren't living beyond their means. In many cases, they lived well within. They lived within their means, not like beyond them. And so again, it's that relationship in society. Mazwa, can you mute yourself? Yeah, we're hearing background noise. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. no problem. Okay, there we go. All right. But yeah, it's um, it's just the context of where we are right now. It's not to say that back then that like their ways were condemned, because again, that was survival in a very particular way. And again, they lived within their means as a community. What, again, with the other thing being, they also traded. It wasn't like some of these communities were completely isolated. They did trade. A hundred percent. But, uh, you know, let's kind of like look at like a, a uh, like, like a time context here. Like, I mean, like when you say back, are you talking like a century ago or are you talking about uh, currently in 2018 and, you know, like the vast majority of like the Northern Hemisphere that this way of life is still lived? And it's really only the equatorial communities um, that are um, in the position that where they don't need to farm or, you know, they don't need to hunt anymore. I'm sorry, could you uh, say that again? I, I'm, I'm a little confused. Yeah, I'm okay. a little confused too. Uh, all right, so, um, okay, yeah, okay. So I kind of feel that we keep referring back to the old days, you know, uh, you know, back when people had to hunt or survive, but there's still the majority of um, Canada, for an example, like I can only speak because I'm from Canada, but like the majority of Canadians still hunt um, for food because it's, because because like that's a way of life we don't it's all have we don't all have the options like i know that the majority of you guys live in the u.s and to you guys maybe in california or like other parts that you know what i'm referring to might have been a century ago but what i'm referring to is modern day life in 2018 in canada that's 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 still a requirement in order to sustain life to sustain communities so not everybody has that option to be able to uh you know afford food not everybody has the option to be able to grow food you know given the remote which of is why we ought to fight capitalism in the first place yes so exactly i want i want to address this point um so i i, I get what you're saying um do, do you know about a channel called mexi she she, she does other stuff too I she's don't, I don't great know. yeah oh yeah, yeah no, great. never heard of her no um she she's, she's really fabulous good. She, uh, she does a lot of really good um, structural analysis, and she's also Canadian, I believe. Um, yes, she is. Yeah. Is she Canadian? Yes, she's she is. from Toronto. Yeah, she's okay. Yeah. Um, I she lives in the southern part of Canada, so the weather's more akin to, like, where I live in New England, where, you, uh, you know, we have some problems growing plants where I live, which is why there's a food desert. Right. Mm -hmm. but, um, which is why I occasionally, myself, have to go and eat meat. Yeah. Just uh, yeah, because you know sometimes I can't afford vegetables. Yeah, there's that, and then that that's oh, goes back to like capitalism of of like it's not the problem of it's a problem of distribution and yeah, exactly. distribution. I was, to get to. It was, I was I was I was bringing up Mexi to get to that point. Which, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a matter of distribution um, when we talk about stuff like that because Canada is pretty solidly a first world country, so. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that these communities exist the way you're describing them, it, I, I'm not, I'm not saying I like, I don't believe you. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that I feel like there, there's more to this. For it's a condemnation of uh, that. That really kind of shows that uh, it, it's more of a condemnation of how uh, capitalism operates, and the fact that even though Canada is a first world country, they can't distribute enough resources to uh, a certain communities to feed that community and that community has to go out and hunt. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because so, everything is profit driven as opposed to simply trying to sustain communities. Yes, because we're in a profit based or society meat. with capitalism or instead meat. of a meat based society. Yeah, and exactly. just, another just, problem is is um, the way the way we like eat meat is like just really, really inefficient. Like we oh, yeah. value yeah. Certain, cuts of, certain cuts of meat. Mm -hmm. Over like all others. Oh yeah, so, like, everybody wants the uh, everyone wants the ribeye. Nobody wants the cheap two dollar steak. Yeah. Right. right, but that's mm -hmm. not a capitalist issue. That's a societal issue because we're so no, it's wasteful. A 
Oh, uh, right. Because, you know, we, you know, we had the options when I open up my freezer and I only have blade steaks left, I have no choice but to eat blade steaks as opposed to if I go to a grocery store, or go to a butcher shop and I have an option to only buy tenderloins, backstraps or strip loins. And that's what I'm going to buy because it's a societal based, like that society, like we had that option. I don't need to go out and, you know, trek back into the backwoods for three days, you know, uh, dispatch an animal, butcher the animal pack that meat on my back, hike back out three days. There's a different relationship with food when you actually physically go hunt it yourself. You consume it. There's a different relationship as opposed to going to the grocery store. I I completely agree with what you're saying. Hold on. uh, on, uh, Deb Vitti uh, was about to make a point. I want to give uh, Deb Vitti the chance to talk. talk. Well, in a sense, I think we are talking in circles, kind of, because we're, we're saying the same things over and over again. Um, uh, you say the West, you say first world countries. Uh, I live in a what they call now developing country, and meat is not like. I mean, you can say as 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 animals is essential, but I don't think that we could um, we couldn't do without it in a in a. It, uh, and uh, and the meat actually is a kind of a luxury here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I guess my whole it point is the for why... most of the, it is in fact a luxury for most of the world and for most of the human history. In fact, for most communities, because even yeah. even yeah. even early hominids and early humans had to eat rarely eat meat at least once a week. Yeah, it took a lot that, of effort. Most right. of their diet came from plants and early grains. Mm-hmm. Right. Before they became farmed, right? And also, uh, I mean, but hunting does become, become, but I mean, especially considering like what it was like before. I mean, it's still like that now because of the uh, matters of distribution, as we've talked about. In places like Canada, it is, or like in the Northwest Territories of Canada, mm-hmm. you know, it is. You know, the permafrost, as uh, survival of the fittest said, is it's like fifteen feet below the ground. You know, with the way that uh, food is distributed in Canada, it's really only you, when you're in the remote parts of Canada, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the reason why meat isn't a luxury there is because meat is literally all that's available as far as food goes. Yes, right. exactly. So you, obvi- so you obviously have like completely different conditions there. Right. Yeah, right. because here, well, I live in Peru and, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, the culture here is. Um, the, the, the natives were the Incas. So they are um, a culture that is kind of famous for having um, andenes uh, and ways to, cu- to, cu- to harvest food uh, even when it's very cold. Mm-hmm. So, and it, 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 this is, this, these techniques are very, very old. I don't think it's much of a problem that. that yeah. And keep in mind, those are old techniques. Like we have more modern scientific. Oh, yeah, we got we got heat lamps. We got greenhouses. Those can. Oh yeah, we definitely have techniques in the modern day that could work. But no. I mean, really, like I said, it comes down to an issue of distribution, which exactly. is something those... that uh, Daniel was pointing out earlier. Mm. The thing is, with like heat lamps and greenhouses, is that they're like really quite cheap. Yeah. Um, so distributing them to like communities like could be like a very viable option, but it's just not. It doesn't generate profit. Right. So yeah, exactly. In this, in this, if it costs us money or doesn't make us money or does both, people like like with people with power, I'm not going to do that. That's is the problem with the capitalist system. So you know, that's why those things are not done, and which is why we got to overthrow capitalism eventually. We'll see oh, that. Sure. Not eventually. Yeah, yeah, like sure. again, you know, like not to talk in circles, but greenhouses do not work in the northern hemisphere. I'm sorry. Six months a year in Alaska, Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, there is four hours of daylight. How but, is a greenhouse going to work? Yeah, but the but but for those six months, we can still distribute the food that is that that to those regions if we want to. But the problem is, we, it's, it, it's very it's the cost. If uh, any one of you guys just want to Google like the cost of milk in Nunavut Northwest or uh, Nunavut Canada or the cost of food, I mean, like you're talking like fifteen dollars a like fifteen dollars a liter, right? For 
for milk. So no, I mean, like, it's not something that we shake our head at and put our hands up. I mean, that's the reality, the cost to get it there. I mean, most of these communities don't have access by a road access to all flying communities. So you need to put food on a charter plane and fly it into a community. And the cost associated with that is, is ridiculous. And most of these communities Under the current system of capitalism, yes. do, uh, do, and- do have government subsidized programs for these people that are in the community. And it's still, you know, $15 for milk, you know, $20 for, you know, um, a dozen eggs. Uh, Dead Vinny uh, wants to say something. I'll give Dead Vinny a chance. It's it's kind of weird for me to hear again this this um, to hear you talk about food and and all these kinds of things when you, because um, we export a lot of food to countries like yours and mm-hmm. we actually get the the remnants the 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 ripple if you will of what we make because you pay more for it and we end up with um, having to pay a lot for things that we actually produce here. And at times, it's like, very uh, weird. Doesn't quinoa come from uh, yeah, yeah. Peru, if I'm correct? Yeah. Quinoa, like, yes, maca, yes. Uh, potato, papa. Well, you, you can grow papa. those uh, anywhere. Oh, papa, yeah. So I just want to ask some random geek questions. So what's the opposite? Like from your opinion, like you keep referring back to capitalism. Everything is capitalism. Your 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 whole place of being is about throwing over, you know, anti-capitalism, uh, over overcome capitalism. So, what's the alternative? Like, what's your ideal model? I just kind of want to hear what. what Libertarian your socialism on that. slash anarchism is our motto. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Automated gay communism. Hey. So, okay, so maybe, okay, so maybe that's the reason why I don't, like, I never realized what I got myself into when I joined this conversation. I just randomly came across your guys' page, jumped in here. So, like, you guys come from a socialism, communism Mm -hmm. base. Yeah, this this is generally us. Okay, well, that's a whole different conversation. (laughs) 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 Also, if if we focus on on the um, sort of points that survival makes, uh, they tend to be problems with, yes, you said distribution, but also you tend to talk about um, marginalized uh, sectors of the world or of certain countries. And this this really touches something and makes me feel really weird because a lot of people talk about um, marginalized people when it suits them in a sense that yeah. Uh, to contradict certain points and then they forget about us. Yeah, that is fair. This isn't a situation where I'm, I'm using these examples to suit me. I'm using a situation because this is my reality. Just as your reality um, in your situation, you know, you guys have a McDonald's and fat burger every, every well, block. You know? My reality, I'm literally just a few miles from the border. Right, most and of the cities are on the border. Most of the produce gets imported from Mexico, or at least avocados do. Mm. Avocados. I, need I love avocados. avocados. Okay. Yeah, I need to cook more with avocados. Don't put their avocados. <laughs> so what's the pros and cons of a socialist, uh, uh, communist society? Why do you think that it's better than a capitalist society? Like, why do you think... Well, because, because it's a society beyond capitalism. That's all. Well, also, uh, I'll also give my, uh, my perspective of like why I kind of came to like you know what I think we need to like go to socialism, go to communism, and stuff like that is, and as well as anarchism is that like it does it is a system with the reason my values that everyone should have the basic rights of access. To food, shelter, healthcare, uh, water, everything. Everyone gets an equal chance to like live, and for those who need more, they can get it and stuff like that. Whereas, like, it's not a system that just idea lets of- people die just because they can't pay to live. Essentially, right? Okay, I, so, I, you're, so, so you're coming from more of like a uni- like a universal based necessity. Uh, I don't well, want to say my income, but like, uh, so like you want to have us have a society that 
universal based necessities of life are provided for everyone equally. But isn't well, that can, all right? can I give my perspective? Go ahead, Vigo. Um, can you uh, let um, you let Dead Vinny go first? As someone quick? who's oh sorry. Uh, no, 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 go Vigan. As oh. someone who is an ex right libertarian, ex conservative, I joined the libertarian socialist movement because I re realized that capitalism, just like the government, rejects freedom, and that only when you can have all the necessities and and needs met is when you can actually have true freedom. Yeah, exactly. It, I agree with that. Yeah, and that's and, and true course, liberty. Yes, as that and we, equality. Yes, you you can only you cannot have freedom of speech if you if you cannot speak because of because you're dying essentially, and so a it, on the current system you can not die if you can't afford to, and that that part I think is ridiculous, and I, that's why I think we need to move beyond capitalism because it is not a sustainable system, and it's also environmentally destructive, which is why I'm a green anarchist. Yes, exactly. That so, what too. current model? So, like, what? So, like, what current global model are you, are are you in support of? Is there any current global uh, global model that you're in support well, of? There are, well, um, there are some global models were kind of warm to like the Zapatismo, but they're not perfect, and we recognize that. So, we have close proximities, but we don't have an actual like anarchist society like we have in Spain. So, we can't really say for right now. There is. Uh... Although Dead Vinny also had uh, a perspective too. On what? Or, oh, well, I, you were. I would someone say the closest to... would be like the Zapatistas. Just for me, In Mexico. Speak, for me speaking. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think uh, the response to capitalism or to overthrow or get a better system is not precisely one that is all encompassing in a sense. Because right. yeah, every place has its own like strengths and and weaknesses, if you will. So, yeah. in this sense, anarchism will be very like would fit very very well because it, it, it would. Um, we it would also it just that. I feel like we need a global yet autonomous and, and at the same time localist. Uh, and international revolt against capitalism. Like yes. we have to have global solidarity between the working classes and marginalized people, but we must also fight locally and also within our own struggles of everyday life, which is most important. Right. So what's and it gonna take for that to happen? I mean, like I mean, like we're talking about a Gene Roddenberry Star Trek experience here. So for well, me, yeah, so it takes a lifetime of work essentially. And also we also all recognize that like Oh, oh, capitalism overthrowing is not possible within our lifetime, but we strive for a anarchist, anarcho-communist society or libertarian social society where everyone has true freedom and true liberty because all the basic needs are all met and stuff like but that. But socialism and communism so, is not a truly free society. Can I can I say something real quick? Well, you're talking about state socialism, the USSR and Cuba, but those aren't actually socialist. What happened right. is the government became the new capitalist class. So it's still capitalism, but with a government being the capitalist. Mm -hmm. Same so, thing. Even if you want to add the USSR as actual communism, which uh, a lot of you guys seem not to um, but consider. But also by definition, which, mm, communism I'm, I'm not getting into so. it. I'm, like, I mean, they weren't communists. They were socialists. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, they weren't so into, I'm not getting into the definition actually, but the point is, uh, if you are uh, as Marx and Lenin and, and all these um, leftist thinkers um, thought about uh, the development of, of you know progress history in the world, um, they they didn't think. They they thought in a dialectical way, kind of sort of. Yeah, no, whatever that means. That. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, the USSR was, if you want to consider them communist, actually, um, was a phase in which a state, the state became the um, the, the the capitalist force of of the nation, basically. Mm -hmm. But well, it wasn't the ultimate phase, so also it's not. Also, socialism is an oxymoron. What? 
State, state social is an oxymoron. Yeah, state social is an oxymoron. I agree. But sure. the, 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 I mean, but so the point was, I, I mean, was not I'm not sure we can get into another topic just because I'm thinking about. Uh, uh, can, I, can I just survive to the fittest? Because I, I just wanted to make a point real quick. Yeah, sure, yeah I ahead. think we should. Yeah, I think we should finish on this topic, and then I'd like to wrap it up because it's yeah, been no, over two hours. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, to, just to and explain, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Yeah, also. Um, if you have a channel, please uh, post it in the the chat just so people can follow y'all. But I'm yeah, on um, my phone. Can someone do it for me? I'll do it for you. Thanks. Um, and when you upload this, put um, try to put our um channels in the uh the comments or not the comments the what is the it? the description description yeah my bad uh but no survival of the fittest I um I just wanted to get to what you were saying about like socialism and communism so like even in leftist circles like it's a very big discussion about like what's going on and like like what what constitutes these various different societies but the the main thing is that the goal ultimately is to do away with this system for its failings in the same way that we did with feudalism and slave societies before it. So it's it's to address these fundamental contradictions in our society. And it's to say that communism, at least because I'm a communist, like the whole point is not to like create this society of our imagination, but to actually build that better society. And that when we don't have states, we aren't run on markets. When we don't live in the mechanization, sorry, the, the mechanisms of the old world and we've moved beyond that and we are truly like a communal human society like on a global scale then we have communism and that's the thing it's it's a goal it's not that one society alone like one state is going to be communist no if communism is a thing that is achieved it's a global thing we won't have these divisions by states or these particular markets or anything like that. So that, that's all I wanted to say. Just to I, I kind of disagree. I see it more of a communization angle and that communism is something you do and it's something we it's something that we do in the moment and not just a goal for the beginning. Yeah. It, yeah, I see anarchy as the society I see is just like it's a work in progress as life is just a work in progress anyway. And I'm working towards the, a, a more freer society, more uh, equal society, a more prosperous society where everyone has all their basic needs, some more than others. And but ecologically yeah. sustainable. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That too. Yeah. And, and how I was describing it, I don't want to make it seem like I'm saying a definitive kind of society. That's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. It's it's a goal to work towards. And when we don't have those, like, when we don't have these market-based systems at all, that's when we have, in at least from my perspective, reached communism. Because we've done away with capitalism, just like we did away with feudalism and slave well, systems. So in on. my perspective, yeah, the society also has to be stateless. Yeah, that too. Mm. Yeah, like yeah, that, which that basically works. means the U.S. is always the exact opposite of communism. But that's the thing. It, it was a thing that happened. At, I mean, this is a completely different argument. I'm not going to try to jump into that. But yeah, um, we obviously don't agree on everything. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, guys, and I appreciate you allowing me to come into this chat and you know today and and oh, and everybody to openly you know discuss your ideas. So I do appreciate that, and I do thank you all for having the conversation. You no problem. It, it actually meant that the uh, chat was kind of structured instead of hopping from topic to topic and then bouncing back to another topic. And <laughs> all right, so uh, does anybody else have anything to say? Or um, I would like to say that the left isn't. When people say the left is eating itself, well, first of all, people say it's a hive mind. But have you ever been in any leftist forums? It's, they're constantly bickering over the smallest We're, detail. It's anything but a high mind. Uh, yeah, the left is not a monolith. We, there's a lot of sectarianism, if that's the correct term I'm looking for. Yeah, there's like... There's Hyper sectarian. A yeah. Hyper sectarian. Yes. The diversity of thought. Mm. All right, well, you know, I'm going to wrap this up. So, like, it, what I meant by this... And so I'm assuming that's like the end of it, unless Vinny would like to oh. say something. Vinny wasn't here for very long. No, I just got here. Like, it, it was very late, actually. So, I'm it's sorry. About that. I really like I it, it, it. It's no problem. I mean, the whole point of an open chat is that you can join at any point and don't need to feel bad about it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
anything like any uh what's the word i'm thinking final thoughts Damn, I'm so sorry, i worked over 50 hours this week but uh no no any, no uh, An american life <laughs> Yeah, the American life. Work three jobs, two jobs, and make ends meet. Or work out. Uh, Any, uh, crap, what's the word? Final Final thoughts? thoughts? Outros, final, any, like, outros or, what was it? Uh, Like. Tags, reps, whatever. Self-promotion, whatever. Well, Uh, self-promotion. Everyone, subscribe to the Vegan Anarchist. Yeah, and spoil me on Patreon. Yes, support Vegan Anarchist on Patreon. I am some random geek. I do movie reviews on my channel. Sometimes I do political stuff. Sometimes I do like a ga- video games let's plays and stuff like that. And I just posted one today of like my Ocean Safe review. Yes, I do a review for a movie that was released a month ago. <laughs> and Dead Tommy- Man's and oh, the te- Dead Man's Animation. Subscribe to Dead Man's Animations channel. Yeah. Subscribe to my channel. I do not have like any subscribers. Okay, I have some, but not over a hundred. So if you could send me those subs, so mm-hmm. I have oh, I'll definitely throw a sub your way. And then, uh, do, and also, do you prefer uh, meatball or chicken? No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, definitely check out my stuff. Um, I have some content up. I I cut some clips from a documentary called um, Hypocrisy that talks about American history and its mm. class uh, conflicts. So I'm going to post a lot more stuff. I also make food. I have a video of me making a vegan meal. And ooh, uh, ooh. I'm going to be posting some animation soon when I get some when they get the chance. But, yeah, definitely thank you, um, American Anarchist, for letting me on. This is really awesome. What else? No problem. So I enjoyed having you on that, here. Also, mm-hmm. somebody tells that freedom thing to include me next time because I'm not pissed at him. <laughs> yes, let's all talk to that the the people that made that one article. They should have included the vegan anarchists in the list of anarchist YouTubers on YouTube. And uh but also in the list of uh recommended anarchist channels. Exactly. And another anarchist channel that everyone should subscribe to, Anarchist Mukwomp. They produce an excellent channel. I just saw their most recent in a video of the spec. Uh, I forgot the name of it. It was about like Pride. Pride, uh, yeah. Spectacle of Rainbow Capitalism. And definitely subscribe to the Bronx blogger. Shout out to him. He's oh, yeah. his, his channel is great. And, oh, oh, I just saw a movie on Friday that just released on Friday. Sorry to bother you. It's uh, yeah, it's great. Oh I yes, love that. I've been no, I've I've been following that ever since Boots announced that he was gonna do like a movie, and I was just like, yes, it's really good. It's good. it's it's totally anti-capitalist too, as well. Yes. Yeah. That's it. That's it for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Vinny, uh, do you have a channel? I don't. I don't know if you have a channel. Well, not really. technically, I have a channel, but I don't have any content. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, he has a man. They have a channel just like everyone that has a YouTube account has a channel. Mm-hmm. I mean, I literally made my first video for this channel before I uh, actually had a before I even had this channel. Actually, uh, I have I have another I work with, and it already that was under my name. So mm-hmm. I also have two channels uh, more that I'm posting, planning on posting videos on, and one of them I already posted. Like two or three, or the bread pelled witch, and the other one is Princess Cressida, which Ooh. I haven't posted that one yet. But I'm planning on doing like fashion and beauty stuff and kink stuff. So, all right, that's cool. Well, I'm gonna. So, just wanted to say sorry. I didn't get to zip. Sorry, I didn't say that much or contribute that much. I'm just kind of hanging. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not problem. <laughs> oh, what's your channel again? Anarchist and Mike Womp. All right, I gotta check out your stuff. Definitely. And All please right. subscribe to to uh, American Anarchist because he deserves a thousand subscribers. That would be criminally underrated. Agreed. Definitely. All right. So All right. I will see you all later. Thanks for stopping by and watching this. And thank you to Survival for uh, coming in <laughs> and talking about veganism. Yeah, oh, yeah thank you guys. I appreciate it. I enjoyed the conversation today. Even the mm-hmm. uh, whole channel on veganism. So, <laughs> I'll see you at the next hangout, and hopefully, there's not six weeks in between it. Especially <laughs> since I plan to switch jobs, so shouldn't be working uh, fifty-five hour weeks from now on. Yep. Good luck with that, man. <laughs> All right.